Good morning, gearheads, and welcome to the Blind Mike Project. Today's lineup, Trump on Theo Vaughn, Ethan Klein trashing Andrew Schultz, Shuli's producer, Ty Rivera poops on Rogan special, and of course, some steel toe. Make sure you go to blindmike.net for all things Blind Mike. And now for your host, a man who travels the country for the love of comedy, Blind Mike Erie. Hey, Craig's back, everybody. Isn't that exciting? Hi, everybody. Yay, Craig's back. It's been a long couple weeks, my friend. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Uh... Or hear you. Hmm? Yeah. Well, someone pointed this out, and I like I like when people have the backbone that I don't. I know exactly what you're about to say. A commenter, a commenter said it was so it was sweet. They were like wrapping me in a warm blanket. Yeah. They said, you know, I noticed I noticed Carl and Casey Day do this. Every visual thing, if they <clears throat> ever play a video, they go, Mike, you you can't see this, but here's what's happening. And this guy's like, why do they have to? Ro-? He knows he can't see. <laughs> Did you know this? You heard about this? I was, I was like, thank you, sir. <laughs> it's, it's always bothered me, and I've never said anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew exactly what you were going to say. I saw the it same. It is. Topic. They, they, they have no ill intention in doing it, but they do do it every single time. <laughs> you know what? Uh, they don't have the experience I have describing Quincy without ju- just saying what's happening. Right. <laughs> without having to be like, I know you can't see this, but yeah, that's where you learn. That's right. The trenches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a real there's a real controversy brewing, but with uh you know, Craig and Casey Day both producing episodes. I don't know if you've seen the comments, but there's a there's a war brewing between the Craigophiles and the day laborers. <laughs> Daniacs. Can we say that the hack riders is a way better name? Daniacs is pretty good. Daniacs. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, the Craigophiles and the Daniacs are going at it. <laughs> Sound like Dane Cook fans. Well, you know, <laughs> equal levels of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> what the best ever? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We're, we're, hey, before Casey Day gets mad at that, go look at the Dane Cook episode we did. We're fans. At least I am. <laughs> but, but what can I? Here, here's what I'll I'll say to the the Craigophiles. What do you want from me? The guy doesn't like doing the show. What, you, what, what can I do? I beg him to come on. I twist his fucking arm. I get him here once in a while. And he, he, he's, you know, half checked in most of the time, looking at his phone, looking at his guns. That's why he doesn't have his sleeves on. My, I have my sleeves on. Uh, oh, you meant my arms, not my, not my firearms. I did mean your arms. Yes. I was like, I don't, am I usually just flaunting my guns on the camera? Yes, unfortunately, <laughs> much to the chagrin of viewers. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, what can I tell you? He's a, he's a, he's rubbed out has taken over. Ever since we, rubbed out is launched, we actually did did just finally record an episode of that. Wow, that's big. <laughs> it's been a while. Well, guys, go to verygoodshow.org. Yeah, well, you still can. It's that's like a the... shooting star. If you subscribe to Craig's Patreon, maybe every every once in a while, and I've only heard rumor of this. Guys, go there and confirm if this is true. I hear every once in a while they upload an episode on that Patreon. Well, and boy, boy, is that a magical thing. Well, hold off joining the Patreon for a while. <laughs> because after August, we're taking a break. Oh, God. 
<laughs> I finally decided to promote this thing. <laughs> Rubbed out uh, is going to get more of the focus, and I just I'm I'm in the middle of a move. You know, that's what happens when one gets divorced, and uh, sure. um, I'm finally in the place. Well, that's nice. And then uh, Very trying to navigate everything and schedule this move to get out of DabbleCon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't no, know. Leases yeah. always start mid August. It was. It was August 16th. It was move in day. Yeah. Well, well, he's back, folks. All right. So you can stop begging me. When's Craig going to be back? He's here. God damn it. And what an amazing show it should be with him. That's right. Uh, but, you know, hey, listen, if you can't spend your time going to verygoodshow.org because they're sloughing off over there, then I guess I got to tell you to go to blindmike.net for Pete's sake where uh, you can subscribe to this podcast. Or Why You Laughing, who are these socials? Why You Laughing is going to be back, baby. It's already back for subscribers. Oh, the gearheads are eating it up. If you're a member on Patreon or YouTube, you're laughing at these people who have been without Why You Laughing all summer. Um, right. But you freeloaders will get it soon enough. First week of September. Um, I'm deciding what day. Should we go back to Wednesdays? Or I was thinking maybe putting it out on Monday. Uh, but you guys let me know what you think. Um, would we be uh, swapping Blind Mike Project and Why You Laughing or having a nice friendly battle? Mm. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. The upload, the YouTube upload would be Monday, which means the podcast would be out on Tuesday. Ah. So everything would be easy peasy. Gotcha. Uh, but I don't know. If they, if anyone gives a shit, let me know and I'll decide. <laughs> I think I'll probably end up just keeping it on Wednesday. I like that. Yeah, time. One, in the, one in the chat for Mondays. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'll do the Matter East thing. Guys, what should I do here? You think you think I'll finally be famous if I move my podcast to Mondays? I wonder what Rocky and Tony Soprano would think of this. I googled good podcasts and I heard <laughs> a lot of them upload on Mondays. You think Spotify will pay me a ton of money if I do that? Ah, oh, poor bastard. This this fucking Joe Matter East. I try and support this guy. <laughs> By by showing all of his great videos. We talked about his viral video, and I suspect that's why his latest video is down. So I sent Craig a bunch of timestamps. Me and Cardiff Electric were actually talking about this video. Mm. Joe, Li uh, Joe List. God, how dare I? <laughs> <laughs> Shame on me for comparing those two. One great man and one greaseball moron. <laughs> uh, but Joe Mattaris was showing off a lot of his great impressions at an REO Speedwagon concert uh, because that's naturally where you go live is it in the middle of a concert that's right. that you're apparently at with your family. <laughs> but but he took the video down. He, he always does this. He's oh. like afraid of... I, I don't know too much about uh, Patrick Michael, the guy that uh, WATP talks about a lot, but I know he's always like deleting his channels and stuff. That's what Joe Matarese does. And Patrick Michael's just a guy in his closet. <laughs> Joe Matarese has been doing... He's been in comedy for 35 years. Yeah, uh, Cardiff messaged me the other day, and he, mm, he's same. like, you're going to need this video. Yes. And so I clicked it, and I started watching it, but I wasn't near my computer. And I was like, this is <laughs> this is fucked up. Oh, like, so you're to blame for this. Yeah, partially, for sure. Yeah. Well, we all want Craig back, right, guys? You see, he's already <laughs> tanking the show. So so I tried to download it, and the link I use, I don't know if he puts like a... a an age thing on it because some of the links for downloading YouTube videos don't work if it's 18 plus. Yes. You have to be over 60 to not be at the point where you kill yourself if you watch this. <laughs> <laughs> if you're 60 and you see a Joe Matteris video, you're like, well, I've only got a few years left anyways. Why would I end it now? You know? It was it was a tough watch for yeah. sure. Especially knowing his family was there. But the reason I bring up Joe Matteris, even though we can't really talk about him, is I wanted to check in on this. Is he still doing a live show in New England? Oh. If not, I have a theory. Can we look if this is still up? All right, let me check. I guess just search Joe Matteris <laughs> Foxborough. I think it was. I think it's supposed to be at like CBS Scene in Foxborough, Patriot Place. Um, which I have seen a couple of comedy shows there. The aforementioned Joe List, Anthony DeVito. I've seen there. Nick DiPaolo. I've seen at CBS Scene. So it'll be nice to go there and not laugh for once. You know. So October fourth and fifth. Still good. Still good to go. Comedy scene. Uh, uh, 23 Patriot Place. Here's the problem. It's the only weekend I don't have a fucking wedding or a trip planned or something. That's right. I really want to go see Joe Matteris. <laughs> Probably. I know. I have to. It's my duty. <laughs> uh, so 
we'll see. Hopefully, I can I can make that work. Probably the fifth, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'll 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 have more information on that. But you know, comment away. Let us know on uh, YouTube or Patreon, whatever. Fire away in the comments if you're down to go see Joe Matteris in Foxborough. I'm surprised he hasn't canceled that. Honestly, I thought he would catch wind that we were going. Now I will say also, like Joe, if you are hearing this, I'm not being coy with you. We're not going to go and heckle you. We've seen Brendan Schaub. We've seen Tom Myers. We're veterans at this. We're not going to fuck with you. We just want to see a comedy show. You know, you, it's up to you to change our minds. Exactly. Yeah, we'll sit patiently, and you can dat fan us <laughs> and create enemies for life, or you, or we can have a nice time. The choice is yours. That's right. I, I'm looking forward to seeing them. Um, driving to Foxborough, however, is never fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. That is a pain. But, but, but we'll I, I got to be honest, the last time I did that was for Metallica. I don't quite think the same turnout's going to happen. So, you don't think there'll be that much traffic? No, I don't think they're going to be shutting the streets down to one lane. I've heard Taylor Swift levels <laughs> of security for the Joe Mattery show. <laughs> Possible. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, let me know if you'd be interested in that. If you're new, because we haven't done this in a while, so there's probably a lot of new people here that aren't aware of what we're talking about. Uh, we've done gearhead meetups in the past, and these are not a thing where you're supporting the show. So don't be a nice guy and just buy a ticket to support us. We get nothing out of this. This nothing. is just something we're going to. We're supporting Joe Matarese. So we're actually showing up at the show and enjoying the comedy show. We're not there to fuck with him or anything. Uh, so if none of that interests you, don't bother. But we've had a nice time. We've done it a few times in the past, and it's been enjoyable. So uh, maybe we'll do that October 4th or 5th if there's enough interest out there. We'll see. I still think the best was seeing Schaub and then Jon Stewart's confusion after the show. Jon Stewart ending his life weeks later. <laughs> giving us money. <laughs> yeah. He's like, guys, I can't. I think, yeah, I think that was part of his will. He's like, here's a few bucks. Now leave me alone. <laughs> I'll leave my Patreon running for a few months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So w- let us know about that. And uh, one thing I want to get into before we get into the real nitty gritty, because I know there's some topics people have been asking us to dive into, which we'll get to in a minute. But I'm curious about this. Are you garbage thing? So are you aware of this? What's happening here? I don't know. I know the producer's gone and that is it. OK, so, yeah, Toby McMullen is out on Are You Garbage? And the reason I'm talking about that is uh, our boy Joke World, who runs a very big comedy channel, um, kind of talks about the news of what's happening in comedy. I thought he summed it up pretty well. So we'll we'll watch his video, and then I'll give you a few more details that made this interesting to me. Are You Garbage announced on Patreon that longtime producer Toby McMullen is no longer with the show. With T-Bone confirming the news himself on Instagram, stating AYG is the best project he ever worked on, and the show changed his life forever. But after a brief on-air explanation... Gang, our good pal Toby McMullen is no longer with the show. Mm -hmm. We wish him the best of luck. We're going to be supporting him in anything he does. We hope you guys do the same. Pause real quick. So what you just heard right there is at the beginning of the show, they do they have a, a standard intro that they do every week. And usually Toby's part of that. Like he's a line that he throws in mid-intro. And where that would have been, that's what they say. And that's all that they say. And if you're not too familiar with Are You Garbage, it's those two guys that you just saw, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. And Toby McMullen's the producer. Now, as far as like the on-air stuff, Toby's not a major part of the show, especially when there's a guest involved. He's not doing a lot of the talking. So I don't think the show as a whole will change much. But it is weird when a major part of the show leaves and you go, yeah, Toby's gone. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> like that That's a little, that strikes me as very odd. And it seems like are you garbage fans agreed? Uh, so Joke World goes on to explain uh, the aftermath of that intro in for him <laughs> fans express their confusion with the situation in the comments of the most recent episode ayg then cleared the air with this patreon post reading dear homies we are beyond upset that t-bone is no longer with the show and hope you know the situation isn't something we are taking lightly toby was a vital part of the show and a brother who will be missed greatly we know you are upset about how it was announced but unfortunately this is an employee employer matter and is a legal chicken sandwich So that's what's odd to me. If you don't know the lingo there, chicken sandwich is code for like, we can't talk about it. 
in the are you garbage world so them saying it's a legal issue is what's interesting to me now a subject i was going to talk about last week but we just didn't have time is uh matt rife was on are you garbage recently were you aware of that i was not was he garbage uh no one knows because the episode was mysteriously deleted now oh, that's, there's did, a theory i did and i that. i don't believe this theory but there is a theory I've seen out there that's I don't think it's implausible. I see some people saying it's crazy. I don't think it's the craziest thing in the world. I don't think it's what happened. Um, but let's see what you guys think. There's a theory out there that um, the reason that episode was deleted was that Matt Reif gave out too much information about where he lives. And people figured out that he bought a new house uh, in Newport, Rhode Island. And like people started writing about it and everyone was, you know, people are freaks. Like why you care where Matt Reif lives unless you have awful intentions. I can't imagine. Right. Um, so like you shouldn't care where Matt Reif lives. It shouldn't be a, a story. I get why Matt Reif wouldn't want it out there. I don't know why it couldn't have been bleeped out of the podcast or whatever. Maybe he just talked about it too much. That it was too obvious. Yeah. But they nuked the episode. It was just gone and it was never addressed. So this being two weird incidents back to back within the span of uh, less than two weeks, I think uh, a theory arose that Matt Reif threatened legal action on them if they didn't fire Toby McMullen. <laughs> now Matt Reif is a lot of things. I don't. Think he's, <laughs> I don't think he's that. I really don't either. And also, I don't see the Are You Garbage guys caving to that. Here's the most logical, if any of that is close to true, the mm -hmm. most logical would be that Matt Reif wasn't involved. His agent or his people got in Are You Garbage's ear and started making threats that Matt probably wasn't even aware of. And being kind of new relatively to the amount of success that they have, Kevin and Foley panicked and were like, sorry, Toby, you got to go. That's, that's not a scenario that I think is impossible. The fire like why would just take it down like i don't get why i don't know i don't know it's very weird that I, I don't i agree with you i don't think that's the reason either the other speculation is that uh toby just released a special completely out of nowhere it was not promoted uh he got fired he posted on instagram as you heard there like you know love the guys it was a great opportunity blah 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 actually i don't think he said love the guys he said love being a part of that which is interesting um but then the next day he posts hey special coming out tomorrow and then he, he just posted on a special on a YouTube channel that had one video prior to this. So it was not a functional YouTube channel. Um, he posted his new comedy special. And I saw it did very well the first night. Probably got way more views than it would have if he wasn't fired. So in a way, good promotion for his special. But the Instagram post said um, he thanked one of the editors for rushing this out because it, they had to put it on a platform other than the one it was intended to be on. So apparently it was supposed to go on the Are You Garbage YouTube page, and uh. then it couldn't. So th some people think it's a dispute over that. Like the Are You Garbage guys didn't want to put his special on their YouTube, which I don't know why they wouldn't. It just seems like extra views for the channel. Um, some people think it's a dispute over money, which I got to say, a YouTube special that gets the amount of views that uh, Toby's will get is not a millionaire maker, you know? No, it's even big... even like Shane Gillis isn't living off live in Austin. <laughs> you know, he's living off of what that got him. Like that special got a lot of, of attention, which led to a lot of opportunities and stuff like that. His kill, Tony, movie... his kill Tony video got more than that. Right. Like the video you make off of the money you make off of one YouTube video is not life changing. So would Toby leave his job over something like that? Also, I saw people saying it's a legal issue. So he probably left. Um, you know, just for reasons like that, like he, he wanted a special there. They didn't want it. Uh, so he left. The not talking about it is very weird. And people are saying, well, it's an employee employer thing. I've never heard of a podcast or even a radio show that is like, we're not legally allowed to talk about this unless it's a massive deal. You know, I think Foley might have uh, touched him inappropriately or something. It's possible. That he's seems a young, he's a young, cute boy, that Toby McMullen. It seems more logical for the legal aspect than anything we've said. Matt Rife forcing them to fire him? <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck is... 
He yeah, can't. the legal thing is weird. Them saying it's a legal issue is where it is weird, and no one's talking about it. It was just very interesting to me. I don't know if a lot of you guys are are you garbage fans um, or interested in this subject. Like, I here's what it does annoy me, and this happens on every Reddit page. Like, people are interested in this, so I went to the Are You Garbage Reddit to see what the buzz was, and that's where I got a lot of these theories uh, from people that are interested in it. And then inevitably, you see a post from someone that goes, "Oh." Who cares? <laughs> Who cares about all this drama? Well, fans of the show. <laughs> you know, like, fans of the show care. I'm not saying it's all I care about. You know, I'll walk out of this room and probably not talk to anyone about it again. But if I'm talking to someone who's a fan of our garbage, I'll be like, that's pretty crazy. What happened to Toby, right? Like, I think that's very normal for people to gossip. And it does annoy me when I hear podcasters bitch about, like, fans caring about them. Where, like, even a lot of the videos that we do, it's like, oh, God, you're obsessed over other grown men. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm not obsessed with it. I'm interested in it. I'm a Which fan I'm of this stuff, so I like talking about it. Shut it off if you don't like it. Right, yeah, like I don't get it. It seems like you have much more of a, a, a hang-up. It's more of a bugaboo for you than it is for me. Yeah, I mean, this, this show talks about that kind of stuff, so. Right, yeah, and so, same with Reddit. Like, if you're on a subreddit, right. what are you expecting? So, the yeah, yeah, it's, that's even worse, though. That's that's crazier, to go on to Reddit and be like, you're talking about this show? Go on to the Are You Garbage subreddit, yeah. where the producer's gone. I think that's going to come up. It's like if we were an Are You Garbage after show and people were like, oh, you're talking about this? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> but yeah, I found that very interesting. So guys, what do you think? Did Matt Reif get Toby McMullen fired? <laughs> <laughs> that was my, I don't think that happened either, but that was my favorite theory where they were like, it is weird that it happened back to back like that. And they never mentioned either one. They should, we should push it like that is what happened though. Cause that's a way funnier story. Yeah. Well, here's the thing is I've started to like Matt Rife more and more. Me too. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm, I don't I don't like his comedy. I just like him as a guy well, more and more. <laughs> well, the we watched the Netflix special and then we talked about it the next day and we were both like, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't as bad as people are making it out to be. It might have been better than Rogan's, which we'll get to. <laughs> but... well, yeah, well, <laughs> some people will agree with you, I'm sure. But yeah, I even said uh, that, I, but uh, but that is not the only producer drama. <laughs> Oh, it sure isn't. Yeah. <laughs> going on right now. All right. Yeah. So let's get it. Let's move on to this because I think uh, people are itching for us to talk about it. But Craig is looking pretty good today. huh? <laughs> you see why jokes aren't funny, guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, here's the thing is I think jokes are funny because here's what I'm saying. Here's my take on the Shuli thing mainly. And we'll, we'll break it all down. Spend a few minutes on it. But like clearly. Yeah, do, look at look at Craig's last year. In the last year, this is the timeline for Craig Ironhead Coney. Mm -hmm. People in his neighborhood gathered, reported <laughs> him to the police. The police questioned him. His family left him, and he <laughs> fled his hometown. <laughs> what do you think's going on with the guy? <laughs> but I'm not a cop. What am I supposed to do about it? You guys can see my apartment behind me. It looks like an adult lives here. Guys. Until until the authorities take the proper actions, what am I supposed to do about it? Yeah. <laughs> I, now, when you put it that way, you know, let the, let, until proven guilty, I say. <laughs> so, you know, but here is a, a serious comment on it. Let's say that does happen to Craig. What a crazy fantasy that would be. He'll be happen. stunned. It won't happen. Imagine, guys, how wild that would be. So imagine. Well, we should say, I guess, if you don't know, <laughs> Shirley's producer was arrested for child pornography. And like a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like quite a bit. I don't know megabytes or any of those terms. It sounds like a lot. <laughs> Heaping piles of yeah, yeah. CP. Um, so Shuli's producer was arrested for uh, child porn. Now, let's pretend. Let's live in a wacky upside down world. Let's pretend that happens to Craig. Like, am I supposed to know about that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, do you think he's logging on here before the show and go, boof, I am wiped. 
you should see some of the image of images I've been cranking off to. If, I, if, that, <laughs> if that happened to me, though, people would come up to you and be like, Mike, the signs were there the whole time. Well, that's that's the problem. And that's what I'm trying to exonerate myself of. <laughs> I'm an innocent man. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> see, I got these bullshit comments from magnesium linoleum that says Craig is smart to keep it in real life. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you do. No paper trail. <laughs> My house is going to get raided by the cops. Like, as it, it, hey, it's if you're innocent, who cares, right? Well, just as long as my front door doesn't get broken, I don't give a shit. Like, that's always like the, like, why do you have to kick? Just knock. I'll let you in. Yeah. Every time Craig's raided, that's what he says. Yeah. Come on, guys. That's you know right. me by first name at this point. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, this ISO Doga, who, by the way, I have emailed with. So really? I have had contact with this gentleman. Oh, no. It was funny. Before the show, I mentioned that. I said, uh, Craig was like, yeah, I've emailed with this guy because uh, he sent me the email for Shuli's show. And Craig was like, yeah, I've emailed with him, too. And I was like, you've been on that show? And he goes, what show? <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> oh, check, it... your... check your spam I... file for sure. It is funny. I did ask Carl. I sent Carl the clip we're about to play. And I was like, did you know this guy? And he was like, uh, oh, yeah, had him over my house. So Craig, Craig, we're joking here, but Craig is Craig, uh, Craig, Carl's good buddies with him. Yeah, someone in, in the comments says uh, <laughs> Carl lives 20 minutes from him. <laughs> yeah, Carl, Carl's good friend. No, I don't think Carl's friends with him. He let him borrow his laptop once, but I don't think <laughs> <laughs> Carl's like, you know what? You can keep it. <laughs> See, gang, we're having fun with a little child porn skin. Why can't everyone do that? I guess is my question today. It's a very powerful question. So, uh, so this happens right after DabbleCon, by the way. Yeah. Um, and one, one point I will address, because I think it's a... I don't think a fair point is the wrong phrase. What am I trying to say here? I understand the the logical jump here where someone goes, uh, if Stuttering John's producer did this, can you imagine the field day would be having? Oh, yeah. And I think that's very fair. Well, I can guarantee you this. We haven't watched the Shuli video yet. Stuttering yeah. John's version would be like, I had nothing to do with it. This guy sucks. <laughs> well, stuttering, no, stuttering John's version would be getting off the internet like he is now. He would just run and hide. Which so, is a guilty look if I ever saw one. Yeah. So I give Shuli credit for addressing it. And I don't blame Shuli for responding this way. I guess my only question is, like, why when a controversy happens? I, and again, maybe I would handle it like this. This is not me shitting on him. For, I'm genuinely asking. When a controversy happens, why do people always, even if it's something serious like this or something like, you know, you tweeted something that was perceived as racist, you make a video where you're like, I just, uh, I want to say to my, uh, my friends and family know that I'm not this kind of man. And it's like, well, you don't talk like this usually. Why are you talking like this? Well, I could kind of see it, like, especially if you're good buddies with the person and something fucking like that happens, it's got to be. So crazy. that's what I don't, I don't know the level of buddies they are. And I'm getting, again, I'm getting all my information from Reddit here and like YouTube comments. What I saw is that like Shuli met him via like gaming, like they met on like Xbox or something and started talking. So I don't know if they were like good friends, but I guess working with someone like, I like Craig, I guess. I don't want to say this publicly. I wouldn't say a friend of mine. But like yeah, Craig and I have become close, even though we've only met in person a handful of times. That's right. You know? Yeah. Now, do I support anything this man does? <laughs> of course not. No. And that's what I never understand. Like, that's what was always weird to me is when people like would go after they'd play the the speeches of like Meryl Streep thanking Harvey Weinstein. Mm -hmm. and be like oh you were part of the problem like do you think harvey weinstein was walking on the sets and going meryl 
you should see this assistant I've got. I mean, you know, there's a real power dynamic that I'm taking advantage of here. And boy, do I go to town on this bitch. <laughs> you should see the mess I left on that ficus. I promise her all sorts of stuff, but I, I make her uncomfortable and she stays silent, you know? <laughs> Anyways, see you later. Good luck on the next Oscar. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, that's what I don't get is, do you think this guy, Iso Doe, is going on it? Like, I was cranking it to some young boys, Shuli. You got to see these. So <laughs> the blaming Shuli, I think, is weird, but I think that's ultimately why you get this response. So, Enough buildup. Let's uh, let's hear how Shuli responded to these reports. You might remember our producer, former producer Iso. Um, so it's come to uh, well. Let me fill you in a little bit on the backstory here. Last year, Iso informed me that children can often be sexy. <laughs> <laughs> What's the backstory going to be? <laughs> for me, children be sexy. The the backstory, you know, people sometimes people are abused as kids, and it sticks with them. Yeah, the backstory. Last year, he so informed me that him and his wife were uh, divorcing. And By the way, his wife might be a gigantic oh. monster. No, you know what? That's weird. <laughs> Guy's getting a divorce. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> how interesting. And you know, you know how Craig leaped right in to go, maybe it's the wife. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say anything for a year. Maybe this guy's wife's a piece of shit. Yeah, it's probably you know what, Craig, it's probably her fault. You're right. <laughs> so you're always on your phone. <laughs> and um he needed some time away to handle that. So he took but again, his... so people are like, I'm sure this is, I haven't listened much to Kevin Brennan on this. I'm sure his stance is like, how do you not know? You're being, what are you fucking blind? Surely you can't read a room with the fuck. I mean, that's gotta be the biggest leap of faith. If you're into that stuff to be like, you want to know what I got? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like, do you think ISO does like, surely I got to take some time off. Let's just say my wrist is sore. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, been... how, how many hints do you think this guy's leaving? I'm sure. I assume, Craig, you can speak to this. I, don't I assume it's that. your whole life covering up something like this, right? No, no, no. I don't, You're I don't sweating think... bullets day and night thinking, is someone going to find out the monstrous, villainous things I've done? I was just trying to take care of my body by walking, and the cops got called. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's all that happened. The whole neighborhood came to the same conclusion. I got... It we was, need to I drive was, this man out. I was trying to avoid a school bus, and they called the cops. Yeah. They want me to like yeah. walk on it. Like, oh yeah, Craig's worst nightmare: a school bus coming at him. <laughs> he took his time away. He hasn't been a part of this in any way, shape, or form for over a year. Since hold on, let me let me try this. Um, you guys <laughs> may notice that Casey Day has been producing a lot more, and uh, Craig told me. He was undergoing therapy. I didn't really know uh, what it was for. Honestly, I thought it had a lot to do with the divorce and other things he was going through, which that can be uh, serious. I understand. I didn't think anything of it, to be honest. Uh, but you guys saw Casey Day on here a lot more. And uh, we made a lot of jokes about Craig. Honestly, I, he, I, I didn't see anything like this coming. I know you guys are going to make jokes about uh, my site and everything, but truly, I didn't... Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is not really the time for that kind of stuff. <laughs> one, time, one time you like lean into it, you're like, I can't see shit. <laughs> yeah, I know you guys are, you know, listen, I know you guys are going to bring in my disability that has ruined my entire life, but this is not the time for that. You can't get contacts through text messages. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is good. This is good to know. I feel like I'm in training here when I one day absolutely have to respond to something like this. <laughs> Ooh, okay. That's, okay, so Casey, okay, so Casey Day started taking over. Well, I noticed Craig getting a little weird. I didn't really know what was going on with him. <laughs> okay, good. I got it down, I think. You are formally invited to come inspect my place if you'd like. But that, of course he invites a blind guy over to do it. 
Bring, bring Justin. He'll find something. Just me. The place is strewn with binkies and little booties. <laughs> I, I mean, well, let's let's. <laughs> I do have two kids. Bloodied Power Ranger underwear, <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, looks like <laughs> it all looks fine to me. I don't know. <laughs> Bloody. <power. laughs> Are the Power Rangers still big? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, sure you don't. <laughs> um. This is right after a show, right? Uh, you well, it's a couple days after DabbleCon, or like maybe a day after DabbleCon. Oh, I thought they did like a show, and then he came and went live and did this after. That's possible. I don't it's, know that. Yeah. Wouldn't you bring it up on the show? I don't know if he knew. Oh, uh, I assume this is just like when he found out. I forget. Does he get into how like how the oh, the story? Yeah, I think we get into some nitty gritty here. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, come to <laughs> my attention and to all of us here <clears throat> that. Sorry. And so I, I wish he had a wackier ringtone to go off during this very serious statement. <laughs> that is the most. Uh, yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> like you see, like lightsabers or something. He's got a stuttering John ringtone. <laughs> He's stone. giving the serious statement, and you just hear boom. <laughs> <laughs> Or you just hear the the guitar from the beginning of a show. <laughs> so was uh, arrested for um, possession of images uh, depict depicting uh, crimes against children. I get like so. I, it, that's a very. It's a very serious charge. I understand. I understand this is all serious. But I guess I'm just saying, like, if I was on a show just reading about a case like this and we were seriously talking about it, I wouldn't be like, I just... So maybe they were good friends? I don't know. But I thought this was just a guy I surely met online. It being someone you know... like If, it, if they met on, like, Xbox, it could have been, like, 10 years ago. Right. True. You know, it being, and that's what I'm trying to, again, I'm sure Shuli's going to hear this and think I'm like shitting on him. I don't give a fuck about any of this. I'm actually asking, like, legitimately, if this happened to someone I know, unless it was like my best friend or something, but like, Craig, let's, again, live in the crazy world where it happens to Craig. <laughs> it would be fucking nuts. It I would. think I would go on and, be, uh, but genuinely, if I'm talking about it seriously, I would be go come on and be like, guys, isn't this fucking crazy? But I don't think I would feel the need. And again, I haven't lived the situation, so maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I would feel the need to come on and be like, I um, I just don't, you know, Craig was, a, I, I never saw anything. Like he, was, <laughs> he was always good around me. Um, obviously, had I known, I wouldn't have had him on the show. Like, you could yeah. talk about it and put together sentences, I guess is my point. If we had... If we had that that glorious road trip to Rochester, you might you might get mopey afterwards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that, I guess maybe and maybe Shuli's response would be like, "That's my fucking friend, you asshole," or was a friend of mine. Like I didn't see this coming, and I was shocked by it. Yeah. And also, I don't know how quickly. Maybe he found out literally right before they went on. I don't know. I, I he, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, that's a lot to fucking process, dude. <laughs> It is. I'm just, I'm literally talking about the actual tone. Whereas if Shuli came on and was like, God, this is crazy. I don't know how to react to it. I wouldn't think less of him. It feels more like I always think when people go out of their way to go on air and talk like this, it feels like a performance to me in the sense of, again, not saying there's anything that's a lie here, but like, remember we played that video of Brendan Schaub crying about his kids. Mm -hmm. Very sad situation. Absolutely. But Brendan pulled out his phone and said, let's go live. Yeah, he didn't wait. To, he didn't wait to collect himself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he pulled out his phone. So surely didn't say like, Hey, give me a minute. I need to collect my phone. He chose to go on the air. I guess that's what I'm saying is like, I wouldn't go on until I was ready to talk about it. You know? We kind of, I kind of appreciate it in some degree too that he just was like, all right, let's fire this up and figure it all yeah. out together. 
Yeah. And this is, I know, I think. The man Julie just did. tweeted out a video of yours. <laughs> Who did? Shuli. She tweeted out a video of mine? He said, Blind Mike killing it is always, like, this was earlier today. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Well, who's the video? Uh, let me double check here. You know, guys, this is exactly <laughs> how I would have handled it. <laughs> Quite frankly, I think what you're seeing is raw emotion. <laughs> and I think that's pretty interesting on a podcast. You don't get that a lot. Uh, <clears throat> Shuli tweets out two hours ago. Killing it as usual at Blind Mike Project. Rob Saul attempts the Kevin Brennan stuttering John show format. Uh, you know, the more I look at this video, the more I think Shuli is really what he's doing is so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> because, because you don't get you don't get raw reaction like this ever. <laughs> I think I, I think he, it takes guts for him to just go on air like this. He's a, <laughs> it's very brave. It was brave of him, yeah. No, but legitimately, I'm asking. Like, I would act like if Shuli's offended by my take on this, I would actually like to have the conversation with him of like, why did you choose to do the episode that like I'm actually interested in? It. I know it sounds like I'm shitting on him, but genuinely, like I'm interested in that process because this is always what people do in contra. This is not just surely related this is what people do in controversies all the time whether it's something minor or something major they go on and they're like i they talk in this very you know these hushed tones and this and there's just a lot of pauses like thoughtful thoughtful pauses in what they're saying and like they're kind of trying to collect and i always read that as like you're appealing to my compassion you see what i'm saying Mm. Let's say, let's say, uh, you know, I find out Mike Harris has this happen to him. Yeah, <laughs> I would probably be a mess. I got news for you. It probably is happening. Mike <laughs> no. Harris also a creep. <laughs> no, 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 no. And no. he's part of this ring of creeps. <laughs> no, no, no. That no, is no. very good show. <laughs> We're the boys, dude. We're, we we just hang. No, they have fun. I'll tell you this. Very good show wears a lot of who they are on their sleeve to the point where you think it's not possible for them to be as racist and homophobic <laughs> and sexist as they come off. You know what I mean? Like that's the good thing about those guys is you think like in real life, there's no way they're this bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't you know? go, don't go watch our last episode. That's on yeah. Patreon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oops. Um, yeah, no. So I, I, I genuinely am interested I don't want to find out. Here's the thing. Like, I don't want to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a friend of mine to have this happen to them <laughs> and then have to respond to it. You know what I mean? So I guess that's where, like, hopefully I don't know what Shuli was dealing with that led him to do this. But that is always my reaction where it's like, I, watching this, I was like, he should have had Bob and Mike on with him to talk about it. Like, isn't this fucking nuts? Like, we worked yeah. with this guy for however long. Like, isn't that crazy that a guy this creepy was in our midst? Have they done a show since this? Yeah, they had one last night that was titled, like, Stuttering John and Casey Armstrong or something. They didn't talk about it at all? I don't know. I didn't watch it. I don't know. Uh, well, what did what did Shuli say again about me? <laughs> what was the tweet again? Let me see how I feel about the rest of this video. You want, you want the uh, first line again? That was quite... Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? Uh... This was an all-encompassing one, but uh, killing it as usual, Blind Mike Project. Well, you know what? The, the more I think about it, this is a pretty natural way to respond. And I think that's... I, I What I'm reacting to is jealousy. I don't think I would have the courage to react this way. So you're just making a good point, Julie. <laughs> you have the courage to turn the camera on. <laughs> Let's see the rest of this. I, I can't... I know you're saying spit it out, but I got to be careful with what I say on here because... Like our our thing, our channel could be fucked up with too much detail. Interesting. Uh, I wonder what that means. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, oh, I'm actually I'm genuinely asking. What, what does that mean? What's on the unlisted videos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> but here's where here's where Shuli is in a tough spot, and I'm not just saying this because he called me a genius, but. <laughs> 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 but here's where it truly is in a tough spot where like 
people now are like, oh, like you didn't know. It's like, well, that's fucking crazy. Insane. Why would he know this about someone? <laughs> not, I, I suspect, Craig, you tell me. Are you going around bragging about stuff like this? Stuff like what? Hmm? <laughs> stuff like what? Like uh, my kids' achievements? Stuff you guys do. You and I so do. I I have no affiliation with that man. Let's start calling Craig ISO don't. <laughs> no, I don't like that. <laughs> he was caught with uh offending Nicole. He was caught with over six thousand images. Why, what she said. She said, now I like dark humor, but blimey. <laughs> <laughs> Nicola, it's all I can do. Of course, this is going to happen to our channel. Like, I'm, I'm, come on, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> this is. I'm this trying is, to get ahead of this thing. I agree with her. Actually, this is crazy. <laughs> and videos. And uh, he has uh, pled guilty to the charges. He's uh, currently incarcerated and he's scheduled to be sentenced in December. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody understands, you know, there were never any signs of any of this. For those of you uh, who have been with us from the start? <laughs> Sorry, Prin go ahead. <laughs> Principal uncertainty with a very funny comment. Uh, the worst part was the hypocrisy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was the worst part. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are many times. Hold on, again, here, I guess here's ultimately what I'm saying. Is in a weird way a defensive surely like. Why does he have to say there were never any signs of it? Of course not. I don't know how I would honestly react. I think I'd be more in this camp than like, isn't that fucking nuts? <laughs> I don't know. I think I would be like, this is fucking crazy, guys. We got to talk about this. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, I get. I guess that's what I'm saying is like, you can do a serious show, but like I would have Casey Day and David Collins on. We'd invite Carl on and... Uh, we probably have Matt Sanford on, you know, <laughs> yeah, <your> wife. <laughs> and we'd all be like, I don't have one of those guys. We didn't know. <laughs> Let's just make that clear. We didn't know. <laughs> Saves the cops having to interview everyone individually. <laughs> right. Yeah. None of us knew. We'll all make one unified statement. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, shout out to uh, shout out to David Collins. Uh, his season finale is coming up. I recorded something for that. And also, uh, our boy Austin Ingalls was on Kill Tony. As a participant or on the panel? What do you think, Jackass? What an <laughs> asshole comment. <laughs> what a way to undercut what he did. <laughs> How did his minute go? <laughs> yeah, it was, you know what? One week, it was uh, Joe Rogan and Shane Gillis at Madison <laughs> Square Garden. And the next week, it was Austin Ingalls. <laughs> you horse's ass. <laughs> <laughs> how did it go over <laughs> uh we're gonna find out so he was on uh the aforementioned matt rife's episode so whenever that comes out we'll break it down maybe have austin on we'll talk about it that would actually yeah we should just tell yeah. him no ice. no ice coffee allowed i assume brian redband had the ice drops ready to go <laughs> yeah <laughs> just, just... <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, all right, back to, back. but yeah, I guess that's ultimately what I'm saying is like, am I, am I being callous here, guys, in the chat? Let me know. Am I crazy? <laughs> because that, that was my immediate thought when I watched it. Like, why, why does he have to respond like that? He didn't do anything wrong, but may, I don't know. Maybe I'm heartless. You know, Miso would be producing, and you hear his kids in the background. And <laughs> okay, so he's like, I, and I swear to Christ, he told me those were his kids. He said they just stubbed their toe. That's why they're crying. <laughs> yeah, Craig probably doesn't even have kids. I have two. Oh, I'm at school. I'm pick up at school. <laughs> <For who? laughs> and and 
he always seemed like a good dad to me. I, I was in total shock when I heard about this. See, but, but that's where I think he doesn't know. He's like, we all, you know, his kids were always in the background. He seemed like a good dad. I don't think they were that close, right? Well, I mean, <clears throat> like, they might not hang out every right. day, but like, I talk, I talk to you quite often. We're not necessarily. I would never in my life say you seem like a good father. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm a great dad. Maybe. How the fuck would I know that? <laughs> well, if you were here and you saw all the signs I allowed, you know, stuck to the fucking walls. Hmm. He did get his guy. I, you know what? I was over there once and uh, he, he allowed his child to eat pizza. If I remember. <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. That's the mark of a good dad. <laughs> and denial i'm not gonna lie I, I felt like there's no way the guy that i knew never gave off any signs of anything like this but who the fuck does don't answer that right no but that's <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> but that's true and th i guess that's ultimately my point is like how the fuck would you know i think maybe if i can diagnose this Shuli knew a lot of the comments would be because Pete, here's the I don't get the hate of Shuli that's out there because it's not from like John fans, <laughs> it's from right. people who hate John but also hate Shuli. Like, there's a subreddit called Shuli's Anonymous that just shits on the guy all the time. I don't get like that degree of hatred towards him, he seems like a fine enough guy to me. Um, but I assume he knew, like, when you get that response enough, he knew people were going to be like, oh, Shuli knew this and whatever. So yeah. I guess this tone that he's having is, like, combating that. But, like, I guess I'm just more in the school. Like, Carl met the guy, had him over his house, I guess went to dinner with him. Mm -hmm. uh, so he took a bath with him once. They, they're very close, these two. Carl right. and I, that's the message I want to get out there. Carl and Iso Doe were very close. Right. But Carl was like, yeah, pretty fucking crazy, huh? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, I guess that's more my mentality. Unless Shuli knew this guy way better than I realize. <clears throat> I mean, there's also like no relating to it. Like something of that magnitude happening to someone you're like pretty I'll tell you, to. I've imagined it. <laughs> he shouldn't. It's run through my head once or twice. It shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> No, no you're absolutely right. Like, I do understand that. That, like, until I'm in that situation, which hopefully I never am, uh, I wouldn't know how the fuck to respond to it. But it is my always, and this is a more serious situation than the other stuff I'm talking about. But like, you know, you know what I'm talking about, though. Like when radio guys get in trouble, yeah. Like then they always come out and they're like, um, "Folks, I made a, uh, I made a comment yesterday." It was an off-the-cuff remark that, quite frankly, I am embarrassed by. Uh, it was not my finest moment, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on myself. <laughs> like, why are you talking like this? Right. <laughs> you're a guy that made a joke about a lady's tits or something yesterday, and right. all of a sudden you're a guy that's talking about working on yourself. <laughs> so I guess that's more what I'm responding to. Is situation like obviously this is much more serious than something like that. But in general, like, I don't know why as a society we can't have conversations about this stuff in what seems like a more natural tone. Right. It's is there more to this? No, that was it. It's just fucked up. <laughs> it it is crazy. But, like, imagine that. Like, that is fucking nuts. Like, that's where I do empathize with Shuli is, like, imagine just opening your phone one day. And the, I don't know how often this guy produced his show or how long he was there for. Um, but just imagine a guy you, like, you knew – seems like pretty well all of a sudden is a, just a fucking pedophile. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's probably he might as well have uh, assassinated himself. Like that's basically how that happens with everyone in your life at that point. What do you mean? The guy basically, I don't know how to say it without getting the, the Go ahead. give it a whirl KMS, but not the show. Okay. Gotcha. Um, he, more or less did that. <laughs> you can't say that on YouTube without getting oh, taken down. No, I forget what the way I, think I say that every episode. Oh, maybe that's why it's always flagged. <laughs> <laughs> I think I use that weekly. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I, uh, oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> that in <and> politics. 
Oh, okay. So unalived yourself, you're saying. That's the that's the that's the yes. That's what the right. cool kids say. Boy, do I hate that. <laughs> unalive. I said assassinate myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't may, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know if there's anyone in the chat because we're just on uh Patreon here. But do the people think I'm heartless and crazy or what? Uh I don't see anything like that. Or is it just Nicola? It's well on Nicola, this, you're usually on my side. On this way I of dare you. going live, the people can change their names to whatever they want, however they want. So currently that ISO guy's in the chat just saying how ISO, you know, what's up, buddy? Just saying how good of friends we are. <laughs> <laughs> he did uh, in in our one email exchange, he said, say hi to Craig for me. I was like, How do you know who Craig is? He did not. He did. <laughs> I feel like uh, uh, Tony Soprano's mom. I'm like, he did not. <laughs> no, he, he did. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, very sad. But yes, final thoughts. I don't think this means anyone at the Shuli Network. Is, oh, th that's what we started with. Um, so if this happened to John, I would be saying the same thing about John Melendez, by the way. Right. If, uh, you know, DG was accused of this or something, whoever in John's world. Uh, was accused of this, and people were like, John knew! Like, what are you, crazy? <laughs> John doesn't know anything. Why would he know this? Right, right. You know, like, you expect John to care enough about other people to however, lead into them? However, though, like, this show and probably Carl would look at it the same way. Would, <laughs> you know, great guy and everything. What a wonderful tweet. But if it was John that this happened to, would surely... Oh, victory lap might be being had. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's possible. Yeah. But yeah, I don't look at that. I don't really look at it that way. I'm not saying like, oh, well, jo Shuli would behave this way to John. So that means I have to behave this way to Shuli. I look at it as like, I see Kevin Brennan taking some kind of victory lap. And it's like, Kevin, fucking kids were fucking sex trafficked to make this fucking right. perverts crank material. Right. And you're celebrating for some reason. You know what I mean? Like, that's where it gets weird and ugly to me is like the Kevin Brennan's of the world. But right. And I am curious what he's going to say about it. I, don't, well, I, don't, I think he's I think he's said quite a lot about it. I don't uh, I don't imagine this story going away anytime soon either. <laughs> oh, it'll be mentioned. But again, like, I don't think there's any problem with like joking about it like we just did with Craig. Like I say, go for it. If you want to make jokes and f fuck with Shuli, whatever, like, but in a joking way. But if you're actually saying like Shuli has to explain himself in some way, that's where I think you're fucking crazy. Here, here's the thing. And I don't want to break the fourth wall here or anything, please. But the reason that you can make those jokes and, you know, I don't care. It's because it's not true. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sounds like an innocent guy jumping out to say that. It is very right no totally could you imagine how, how it look if i fucking got mad and stormed off <laughs> <laughs> and now i just go right into shuli's i'm like oh boy guys uh guys i'm gonna get ahead of this one <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how to turn this stream off but <laughs> i guess i guess we're another goal <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah. So those are those are my basic thoughts on on uh, the Shuli situation. But I don't know. I've, we're not live, so if you guys have more questions next time, if there's something I didn't address, like people were messaging me, like, "Are you going to talk about this? Are you afraid to talk about?" I'm like, "No. Why would I give a shit?" So maybe I'm heartless because people are like, "You're you're probably too much of a pussy to talk about this, aren't you?" And I'm like, "No. Why would I be?" I don't, this I don't current know what situation. Do. Yeah. <laughs> Why would well, it affect us? Thing, if you're nice to Shuli, which like I because I don't have a problem with Shuli, oh, people yeah. think that like I kiss his ass. Or because like I do a show with Carl, people are like, You're a Carl ball washer. I'm like, no, I just don't hate these people as much as you seem to. So it's, it's almost like they didn't hear the beginning of the segment where you were talking about how good of friends Carl and ISO ISO are. That, were. I'm not positive that wasn't Carl's computer, is all I'm saying. <laughs> and right. I would like investigators. I'm just, here's what I want. Investigators to do their due diligence, is all. <laughs> and if Carl's innocent, what's the harm in that, I say? <laughs> no, 
I'm sure he's 100% innocent. <laughs> you say that unconfidently. Guys, get that out there. Carl, and I swear to God, he is not a pedophile. So start telling everyone, not a pedophile. All right? <laughs> and that he probably didn't know about this. Right. And that's enough of that. That's the last I'll say on it. <laughs> All right. What's next? <laughs> Um, we want to go from here. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about a uh, old. Let's ease back into sanity and talk about old Donnie Trump. What do you say? Uh, okay, <laughs> this is wild. So uh, the Donald was on Theo Vaughn's podcast this past weekend. Very yep. popular show. Very smart move by Trump going on here. I think, um, because we'll get to it. But it's something that like. Differ politicians are incapable of. And it's why, like, Bernie was smart. I think it's why Andrew Yang was smart. Tulsi Gabbard, people that go on all these podcasts, they see the value in that. Now, me naming people that have all lost elections, like Andrew Yang, I think, got three votes. <laughs> so maybe it's not the smartest idea. It's but I do think. And Kamala ever got. <laughs> I do think. Nice. Nice. No, man. Nailed it. <laughs> I do think it adds in, like, Trump at times doesn't seem like a human being. <laughs> so this at least gives him, like grounds him a little bit, I think. Um, but I think Theo is the perfect person to interview Trump because he's got a little bit of norm in him in the sense of like, I don't know if he's fucking around or not, you know? Oh, he, I feel like he definitely was on this one. He's got to be, right? <laughs> There's some things he said to <laughs> Likely the next president slash the, a former, former president. The president of the United, a former president of the United States. Some of the shit he's talking, like the, we'll get to it, but like the merry-go-round comment was just very funny. Well, let's, let's re let her rip here. So uh, let's start with Theo Vaughn and Donald Trump. This is uh, talking about Ali and Frazier. Oh, yeah. So this is, this is very weird. Uh, Theo Vaughn's asking about like the first boxing match he went to and like first major sporting event. And, uh, Trump talks about Ali and Frazier and talks about what good friends he became with all them and everything. But he obsesses over little things. Like on KMS, we've talked about the Hannibal Lecter thing. Yeah. He loves mentioning Hannibal Lecter. He gets obsessed with little things. And I don't know if he just likes the sound of the words or what it is. But um, th this is him talking about something very specific from the Ali Frazier fights. <laughs> but they were two undefeated fighters. They were both undefeated. Uh, Muhammad became a friend of mine. So did Joe, uh, Jolt and Joe. Uh, he was, uh, they were two great fighters. That, yeah. that fight was incredible. I think they had like many heart attacks that night, literally heart attacks <laughs> in Madison Square Garden. I in think it was place. Madison Square Garden. <laughs> he, first of all, he always talks like Trump. They had many heart attacks that yeah, night. Yeah, so many. <laughs> you're, when he says that, you're kind of like, what the hell is he talking about? They had many heart attacks. What does that mean? Well, luckily, he goes on to explain. Yeah. <clears throat> One second. Oh, take your time. Heart attacks. Here it is. <laughs> Who took you to the fight? You remember? Uh, I went with my father and my brother, Robert. And uh, it was just, I don't know, I must have been very young. It was a long time ago, but wow. you would never forget it. That was one of those moments. Oh, yeah. But no, literally, there were like many heart attacks in the arena. <laughs> if you were having too much fun? Or would you <laughs> hold on, like, hold on. Theo was, Theo was like trying to move on. He's like, all right, that's a weird heart attack comment. Anyways, <laughs> who, who are you there with? And Donald's like, N listen to me. You're not understanding what I'm saying. Their heart stops. <laughs> Everyone in the building. Now, I feel like that would have been in a part of sports history. Yeah. Like, this Ali Frazier, thing. which is known as the heart attack fight. <laughs> Everyone, half of Madison Square Garden, their hearts stopped. <laughs> yeah, Metallica played in Moscow in 1991 and 11 people died. <laughs> Attacks in the arena. If people having too much fun, or what no, do you think? Just drugs? heart attacks because it was <laughs> such a. <laughs> that's the thing, though, is like he's so quick with those comments; it's unbelievable. Yeah, well, that's where I'm like, it, does Theo Vaughn understand how charming he is? You know what I mean? Like, he is he in on the joke with us? Which I, he has to be, right? I think he's in on the joke, but I also don't think he knows how charming he is. <laughs> it feels natural, and I heard recently. I think it might have been like Jordan Jensen or someone talking about like uh, that. 
like opened for Theo Vaughn. They were like, you don't always know what Theo Vaughn you're going to get. Like he, he's just a weird guy. So I do think it's natural. For sure. The event. Oh, yeah. It was so, the people were just, I know a friend of mine, the father, he went, uh, he had a bad heart attack. Literally, they took him <laughs> out. They were taking people out. It's an early it was KO. A, and I don't hear that. <laughs> I don't think there's any. By the way, Donald is ignoring all of these. <laughs> not imagine, one, not one is landing. Could you imagine Trump on Rogan? It would be two people ignoring each other. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, that's why I think he's smart to go on Theo Vaughn. I know he wanted to go on Rogan, obviously. That's the other controversy happening. Um, but I think Theo Vaughn is probably a smarter place because it makes Trump more of a human being where Rogan might actually question him on certain things. And it would just be like a less fun conversation. I thought this like humanized Trump a little more than like anyone. I can't think of anyone that could do a better job at that, really. Mm. I don't know. I, I guess that has, but you would think Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, their first fight. Yeah. But it was a very exciting time. Well, yeah, and just people being, I guess, so yeah, sometimes our systems aren't ready to handle the amount of excitement that's going on, you know? Like, I think, like, yeah, maybe people just couldn't even handle so much joy. You think, like, you think yeah. it was that people were just so excited. They had heart attacks. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they maybe Listen, smoked. I don't know what it was, Theo. I'm just telling you the facts. Theo's face when he said heart attack again lit up. It was very funny. What do you think it was? They had heart attacks. <laughs> dropping like flies <laughs> it's the craziest thing and Theo's like trying to get and Donald's like no 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 you don't understand everyone was dropping they were <laughs> dropping dead at this MSG show what do you get about and Theo's like yeah you know like in sort of a metaphorical sense you mean and Donald's like no 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 for real <laughs> <laughs> the most stretches they've ever had at MSG <laughs> It was a line to get on the ambulance. <laughs> There's no way that Donald Trump in 2024 would be the first person to note that there were mass, mass casualties at the Ali Frazier fight. Up right now. Heart attacks at Ali Frazier. Say again? I'm looking it up right now. Oh, yeah. See if it's been reported. Um, no. Not a thing. I'm seeing. Uh, the, it, what pops up first is, did Ali have Parkinson's during his third fight with Frazier? Okay. Well, so there was at least one, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's, the, that's the other weird thing. And I'm sure, like, if this was like a political show, if this was like a left-leaning political show, we'd be nailing down, like, he didn't, he wasn't sure if it was MSG or not. Because there was a weird moment where Trump's like, it was a Madison Square Garden. I think it was Madison Square Garden. And it's like, you you said you could never forget it. <laughs> so he does do weird little things like that. But Oh, people have heart attacks eating a thick soup, you know? So it's like, I'm not surprised <laughs> that something so awesome like that would make your heart be like, yeah, I'm out. Yeah, but I never hear of it, you know, and Anymore. I'm sure it happens. Just that one. But uh, we had an exciting <laughs> event the other night with Elon. <laughs> Just Oops, right on. Theo said that one of the wildest things. People have heart attacks eating a thick soup. <laughs> and somehow Donald Trump, that didn't phase him. And he just goes, so me and Elon Musk. Uh, Principal Uncertainty says two people died of heart attacks. I'll believe him. Oh, really? I'm willing to take that as fact. <laughs> I don't think it's worth going off. Principal Uncertainty, no. He's a guy that, no, he seems like a, a grounded, well-educated guy. That's according to Boxing News. He's citing his sources. Oh, good. All right. Yeah. So there were, I'd refer to that as many. I'd refer to that as like, wow, two people had a heart attack. If you and I both had heart attacks right now, that would be a lot of people having heart attacks on this podcast. That'd be a hundred percent of the people involved in the show. <laughs> True. I guess this is not Madison Square Garden, but still. <laughs> It'd be more like, I bet, I bet there's that many at like every football game. Two? At least one. I don't know about that. Every football game? I don't know, but I... Now you're I bet trapping me into this argument. <laughs> I, bet it's, I bet it's common enough. Yeah, I don't know about one at every football game. I bet... I bet well, that, you're, you're like Trump now. Trump's, no, no, like, no. Trump's like, you know, probably... Not, maybe it happened at other Super Bowls, probably, you know? <laughs> I, I bet it happens. I bet it's kind of common. 
And Trump's acting like it's the excitement of the match that did yeah. that to all not, these people. Not the queso dip bought underneath the stands. <laughs> right. I bet there's been more heart attacks at an event than Ali Frazier. Well, I'm not here to dispute that. I absolutely believe that. Well, two just seems but not like according to Donald Trump. To go on a tirade for this long? Two? Maybe, but... maybe two deaths. Maybe they're not telling you about all the real heart attacks. Maybe Trump knew about some other. Here's the latest conspiracy, folks. Trump is trying to uncover what the media doesn't want you to know about is all the people who died at Ali Frazier. I bet more people get beaten to death at every 49ers game than had heart attacks at Ali Frazier. Well, I'm not willing to wade into those controversial waters. <laughs> Let's just move on. This is him talking about his followers. Okay. All right. I have hundreds of millions of people. Even now, uh, I haven't been too active on X, but uh, I have, I guess, 90 some odd million people on it. And But I was much higher than that when I was it's like actually all, it's all the it. people. I don't even know how many people there are. <laughs> Like that, to me, that is so great that the president is the former and possibly future president is talking to a guy who thinks it's possible that there are 90 million people on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I love. <laughs> ah, man, I don't even know how many people there are. 90 million? That seems like a lot to me. <laughs> That's where I'm like, he can't be fucking for real. I, yeah, I think he's, I, I, here's what I, I, I bet he's like that in real life and just enhances it for the podcast, I assume. You know, doing, and he's aware of who he is. Doing it to guess. Trump is very funny. It's the, it's gr the greatest. I love it. <laughs> Here they are talking about Kid Rock. Now, but it is, and Trump gets to this later. I forget if we have a clip or not, but like Kamala wouldn't do this and I don't think would like handle it very well. No, she... Don't even get me started. <laughs> I'm saying it to the wrong guy. Yeah. Casey Day on here. We'll talk about <laughs> I think he would even agree with me. Yeah. Like, she's not doing anything. She's not doing soft. She's not even doing softball interviews with CNN. Oh, that's true. That's a, that's a different crazy angle that I'm not even taking. I'm just saying, like, in this setting, that seems like, like, okay, Biden is this way as well. Like, Hillary is this no. way. Even like AOC. I think it's a stiffer group. So I'll give Hill. I'm gonna. I can't believe I'm saying. It. I'll give Hillary Clinton credit. She did between two ferns. Sure, but that's scripted. So like Kamala's not doing that shit. I just I don't know if they would. Well, I guess Trump, here's the thing: is like Trump's not picking up on anything Theo's doing. He's kind of just well, rolling with it. Plus, Hillary, it might be scripted, but the script was just crushing her, and she still did it. Sure. Let yeah. me let me compliment her once. God damn it! All right, fine. <laughs> Craig <laughs> loves Hillary. <laughs> Here, uh, by the way, I don't know if you did you see Kid Rock at the RNC? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very, it was very bad. <laughs> well, this is this is Theo and Trump talking about uh, Donald's good friend Bob. <laughs> He's terrific. He came to the convention. He knocked him. He knocked everybody out. He was. Now, Craig, you just <laughs> said. <laughs> <laughs> but was... you said he was not good. It was him on stage with no band going, everybody say Trump, Trump. And all the fucking geezers that were there going, yeah. He knocked everybody out. Now, I, I wish so badly I could do a good Trump. Yeah, me too. Because if, I, there was something that happened. I think Lewis and Shane were on a podcast together. And ever since then, I've been ha I have had this in my head, but I can't execute the impression. But I've been doing Trump insulting Louis J. Gomez, <laughs> which I wish was a bit that I could do, but I can't because I don't do the impression. He's Puerto Rican. You believe this? He's like a pretty fake ass dude to me. <laughs> Illegal, probably. They call him the rattlesnake. <laughs> but I just can't execute it, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, if he said that about Hulk, Ho Hulk Hogan was awesome at the RNC. <laughs> Well, he, he said, you're you're lying to me. You are fake news because you were saying that Kid Rock was not good. Donald says otherwise. He's a great guy. He's just a great guy. He's great he's guy. popular, very popular. Oh, he's so, he's definitely, he's a real dirt serpent too, dude. Yeah, he's a freaking he's, legend. He's, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's a legend. He is a legend, yeah. I guess, in a true sense. <laughs> he's a dirt serpent. He's a, and Trump's like, absolutely. <laughs> you nailed it. Bud Light is fucking gay. <laughs> <laughs> But that, my favorite is just Theo saying things that 
amazingly get no reaction out of Trump. You know, like that's that's what's amazing to me is that Donald is unfazed by what's happening yeah. in front of him. You're curious, like what what's going? He's like, is he like, why the fuck did I do this? Or is he like, no, this guy's got something up. <laughs> it is, there was a weird moment at the end where uh, Theo gets like kind of thrown off. You can tell he's like looking over at someone. And he goes, oh, we'll we'll wrap it up soon. Is that what that is? And Donald goes, yes, please. <laughs> so it seemed like he was kind of like at least rushed for time or something. Well, he's probably Which, doing, Trump does a hundred of the of these. I yeah, but you know what? I feel like if you're gonna do Theo Vaughn's podcast, be there to do it. You know, he gave him. Let an it hour. be the podcast. He gave him an hour. Yeah, I guess. Imagine being pissed that you have an hour of the former president's time. Oh yeah, the, uh, Theo wasn't pissed. I'm just saying, like. I would think you're going there to be in that world. Cause like, I think Theo's podcasts are usually well over an hour. It looks like they did it at Mar-a-Lago or something like it's some fancy place. So if that's, if, if he's there, maybe I get it, but if he's out doing I, stuff, I guess my point is Theo for the context of what's happening here, Theo doesn't need Trump as much as the other way around. The whole point of Trump doing this is for his image. I like mean, there's a reason he chose Theo Vaughn. You know what I mean? Yeah, and there's like a reason he's getting like, all these rappers out of jail. <laughs> this this video will do will be great for Theo, mm -hmm. but it's not going to change his life. You it'll know what probably, I mean? It'll probably make it worse for a while. Right? Yeah, he's going to be considered because there are some things he said in here where I'm sure like liberals are going to come after him now and call him a racist or something. You know? I mean, you can't look at him and not expect this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would you think Theo was a fucking Democrat <laughs> from Louisiana? The mullet, yeah. a guy, just a guy. Hey, listen to his voice. <laughs> <laughs> this is the this next stretch is like unbelievable. This conversation happened. Let's talk right. about a, a, addiction here. Oh yeah, so this is the this is the one that everyone was going with, I think. But it is great. It seems like Trump doesn't know what cocaine is, and he's talking about it to the perfect guy. You're no kidding. <laughs> you don't take drugs or if you don't have alcohol, it's real easy not to drink it. It's yeah. when I had a friend who um, went to the Wharton School of Finance with me. He was a very smart guy. Where is it? Wharton School. That's in Philadelphia. That's at, at oh, Penn. Oh, yeah. Rocky. Right. Mm -hmm. it's a great, <laughs> Trump a, goes right. <laughs> yeah, let me finish my point, please. <laughs> very good. You know where Rocky was filmed. Well, that's why. That's exactly how I think he's looking at this. Oh yes, very good. <laughs> That's a shame. That that is a shame because you're right. Because Trunks Trump's so much of an egomaniac that like he while he is a very funny guy, he doesn't appreciate what's happening around him. Well, I think he thinks he, at this point he's doing like a a, a make a wish or something. Well, that, what's funny, like I assume what Trump's knowledge is is like, oh, this guy's big with the kids because they start the interview by saying like he's like Baron loves you. Baron tells me you're terrific. He's like you got to do this guy's podcast. Oh, that's probably actually very real. Yeah. Oh, no, I believe it. But I'm saying it's like, you know, if your kid was like, oh, dad, this guy is fucking you have no relation to that. You know, have, what I mean? have you seen Baron lately? He looks like the coolest supervillain of all time. He's very tall, right? He looks exactly like Donald used to when he was young, except six foot eight. Future president. Oh, for sure. Definitely in the running, for sure. I like the way he was. He's talking about Baron. He's like, uh. He's good at uh, he's good at soccer. He's great at soccer. Loves soccer. Like everything he talks about is so Trumpy. It's very funny. <laughs> and uh, it's part of the University of Pennsylvania, the okay. business school. Oh, it's the nice down there. Yeah, my friend's brother went there. Or something. It, well, he, he ate then near he, there. Then once. he was smart <laughs> because it's a great school. Well, and, um, but this this person that I met, he hated I, the taste I, of scotch. He hated, hated it. it. Couldn't stand it. It's so good. But he insisted. Hold on, on a second. It's just very funny that was, Theo's like, and then that, again, that has to be part of the character, right? To go, my buddy went there. I think he ate near there once. <laughs> we ate near there once. And there's no, what's beautiful about Theo's performance here is there's no stopping Trump. Like, no, it doesn't even, it's not a blip on Trump's radar that Theo is saying these ridiculous things. It's so funny. <laughs> it because he wanted he felt it was important to be able to drink i said no just don't drink he said you know to be successful in business you have to sort of interact and you have to drink and i said don't do it anyway he became an <laughs> unbelievable alcoholic uncontrollable alcoholic oh i thought you were like one he, of the best <laughs> 
He's unbelievable. It did, it did sound like what he meant, honestly. Oh, that's so like funny. This guy, he turned out to be the greatest alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> he meant one of the best. Now, this is definitely the most played clip, but it's so funny. <laughs> but this is where, though, like, I'm so glad Trump did this instead of Rogan, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, this is way funnier than some serious discussion on fucking if, if COVID. Trump just, if Trump just told that story on Rogan, it would have been Rogan going, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about it. Addicted? How, how did? No, I would just do cocaine. That was really, well, yeah. So I, not just, what, yeah. That's and that's it was down and that's down and dirty, right? Yeah, I, this is yeah. This I mean, <laughs> trying to get down on Theo's level now. <laughs> I he is kind of relatable in some ways. That's what I'm saying. It's like this is about as relatable as Trump could be. I think. Like a conversation without the cameras on. This is as close as we're gonna get to. Yeah, it. and I honestly like. Genuinely, take whatever your thoughts are on Trump, if you love him or fucking despise, whatever. Take that out of it for a second. When you're watching this, you can tell it's a guy who has never drank or done drugs, apparently, kind of like relating to someone who has and like actually is interested in it. Like, that's how I took it. I did, too. Exactly. Yeah. And this is. Yeah. This. I mean, it was. Yeah. I, but you don't anymore. No, I don't do it anymore, man. And I'm not. Theo does have a smile on his face like he's like, I can't believe I'm telling him this. This is <laughs> wild. I'm talking to Donald Trump about doing coke. Doing is it. it too much? Too much to handle? Some of the stuff started to get a real rattle in it, too. I don't know where it, we were even getting it from in this country, but... yeah, <laughs> That was him teeing Trump up and he didn't yes. take it. <laughs> That's him being like, yeah, where do you think we might have uh, got any people bringing it over the border, maybe? Hmm? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Trump's like, I'm not swinging for that one. Yeah. <laughs> we feel like I was a mechanic or something. So the thing you get back to then, it's alcohol for the most. It didn't make any sense. Right, yeah, but mm -hmm. I, what I want probably is cocaine, but I know that if I have a drink, then it'll give me, it'll like be like, okay, well, I had a drink, then I can do this. Is cocaine a stronger uh, oh, yeah. up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, that's, that's how you know he's never drank because alcohol is a downer. Is it stronger up than the depressant? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Donald. <laughs> Do you weigh up with cocaine more than anything else you can think of? Cocaine will turn you into a damn owl, homie. You know what I'm saying? It'll you'll be you'll be out on your own porch. You know, yeah. and you'll you'll be your own street lamp. You're freaking. And is that a good feeling? Well, no, it, it's a horrible. miserable feeling. <laughs> but you do anyway. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. My that's again when I talk about him being so Trumpy. Where he's like, is it a good feeling? And then the turn on a dime. It's a miserable feeling, isn't it? <laughs> he's like, is that a good feeling? No. <laughs> it's also where you can tell, like, he's listening to Theo, but not hearing him or whatever the expression is. Yeah. Like, he, like Theo goes, you feel like a damn owl. I'm on the, out on my porch. And Trump goes, yes. <laughs> I do cocaine. And I feel like I'm a mechanic or something. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I get that. That's him going like, I hear you. I don't know how to respond. So I, I, well, it's like Trump saying, I get what you're trying to say, I think. Right, right. <laughs> I can't believe this happened. That's so yeah, Theo did such a good job. Theo did a perfect job because so many people would feel the need like, oh, I can't be Theo Vaughn today. You know what I mean? Well, the thing is, like, if Trump storms off the show, it's just as good. Well... Sure, I get, it. but it's kind of it's like we were just talking about with Shuli, where like I look at this as like your job, and if you're on a podcast, you're supposed to think of the like the audience, you know, what you want your show to be, what the audience wants to be, like the mm -hmm. right mix of that. And right. I think that's exactly what Theo did. Whereas a lot of people would have been like, oh well, today I have to put my serious hat on and I have to ask Trump about taxes and I have to ask him about the border. Whereas, like, Theo kind of got into those subjects, but in a Theo way. And here we go with the economy. Oh, good. <laughs> There's a lot of popularity. We have a lot of uh, a lot of people that want to see me come back and win because we had a great time. We had the greatest economy in history when I was president. We had oh, yeah. My cousin got a boat. Numbers. Yeah, we had the best <laughs> African-American. <laughs> That seems somewhat anecdotal, Theo. <laughs> you bought a boat. My cousin got a boat. That's that man, that Trump economy. <laughs> Boats were flying off the shelves. Now, this is one of my favorite parts here. Uh, okay. where they, where they talk about Biden. 
Oh, yeah. This is like Trump's he's getting out of here, but he's loosening it up. Mm -hmm. But who are they? And he's when an they say angry that? person. Well, I would say Schumer, Pelosi, and numerous other people. Uh, the heads of the Democrat Party. Yeah. Thugs. And they did. They threatened him violently, I think. And he you didn't want to get really out. Remember, he said, only God will get me out, right? Only God will get me. Somebody dressed up like God and, and chased uh, him out of there. Yeah. <laughs> It's a great, just a great image. Yeah. Boo, Joe, I'm God. Did we not have the carousel part? Oh, I don't know. I thought we did. Maybe not. You told oh, me. You cut these. I, I don't, I listened to it. I don't know if we ended up cutting oh. the part, but he's talking about what's going on in Biden's head. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know he's if we like, have that, but. He's and Theo's like, yeah, it's like a carousel in there, and someone just didn't plug it in. <laughs> merry go round <laughs> or merry go round. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the last clip here. I I just love. I want to stay with that for a second, just because I love the idea of Chuck Schumer dressing up as God <laughs> and running after him. Get out, Joe! <laughs> I was like, ah. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> uh. This is the last clip. He's talking about Bernie Sanders. Okay. This is like Theo's trying to say something nice about Bernie because he had Bernie on also. And Trump's like, oh, ah, wait, no, this is the clip, actually. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Oh, yeah, it's him talking about Bernie and Joe. So there's yeah. a minute where like Theo's like, Bernie was great. And Theo, uh, Trump's like, uh, oh, yeah, is he? Like, you can tell they kind of annoys him. <laughs> Like we have to be able to believe. Would you that. like Bernie? Is he? Are you friends with him or something? No, I met him the other day. I, I was like, that the first time? It was the first time. Were you impressed by him? I yeah. One thing he's he's still sharp, right? Oh yeah, he's still sharp. He doesn't suffer from what Biden did. No, 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 no. no. Mental dullness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Biden is just Biden is Mentally like gone. He's you know he's somebody put a merry-go-round in his head. I heard, but that's you know, but they didn't plug it in. They didn't tell him. Yeah. Um, totally right. <laughs> <laughs> I like Trump being with a guy where he's kind of like. Trump's the straight man. He's like, yeah. hey, you, you said it. I didn't, pal. Trump could be the best straight man of all time. <laughs> that is, uh, that was very funny. Yeah. So I encourage anyone to go watch the whole thing. Cause like there, there genuinely there are like Trump is very, it's funny to laugh at, but it's also like, there are human moments, which I think for him are pretty rare. So yeah, I, enjoy, I enjoyed it. Uh, I guess this is a perfect segue to go to the trout. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot about this. I guess we have to stay on Trump. This is not real, is it? I, it's either the perfect edit or it's real because it seems like it was actually running. I was told you're, you're a Newsmax employee, yes? Yes. How have you allowed this? Go to your hire. Start tugging on some shirt collars here. <laughs> For real. Saying we look like idiots. Me, let me. I'll find out right now. Hold on. <laughs> Get some answers here, for Christ's sake. Hello. Apparently, this is real, but it seems like it's. A, it doesn't just seem like a sketch. It seems like an over-the-top sketch. That when I play it, people are going to be like, "Why would you even believe that was real? You fucking idiot." I'll tell you exactly why I think it's real, but it's at the end it's of the run on Newsmax, right? It's what it looks like from this video because they left part of a real commercial in. So it's either very clever. That could be editing, though. Correct. It's either very clever or it's real. I'll find just out. Listen to the fucking voice. All right. So this. So we've talked famously. Trump. Everyone Bear. remembers. We yeah. talked about Trumpy Bear on this program. Very real. <laughs> yes. Trumpy Bear was all too real. Um. So we had a lot of fun with Trumpy Bear. This seems like, I guess, the next evolution of that. So would you say, was it fair to say this is essentially Billy the Big Mouth Bass? Yeah, it's just Tony Soprano's uh, having panic attacks every time he sees it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's... Guys, I'm aware I'm probably an asshole for thinking this is real. I hope but we But everyone's can. telling me it is. So, <laughs> fire away. 
or a message from the 45th president of the United Ponds of America. Let's make fishing great again, okay? He's here, everyone's favorite. Because of the voice. Trout. No one has ever seen a fish like me. This is parody. That cannot be a real product. But if you're going for what would Trump sound like underwater, that might be perfect. What an insane boy. Newsmax has gotten to you. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, it cool. sounds like Trump underwater. <laughs> <laughs> what an insane excuse for this ridiculous product. Um, holy fuck! It is what? Speak. It's real. You're on a podcast. It's it's real. What's making you say that? Um, other Newsmax employees and the uh, articles I'm currently finding. <laughs> Why? So, who's selling this? Not Trump, obviously. No way. It's got to be. It's got to be a like a the the fucking Lincoln Project or something. Um. Yep. It's. It is. It, it's actually trumpytrout.com. Oh. For only sixty bucks. Oh, what a bargain! Should we get one? I feel I, like by the it's going to be dated by the time it even comes in the mail. Oh my god. Okay. Well, I guess we <laughs> I guess we can look at this differently now. You should have one behind you. I should. I it's definitely not going in my living room. So oh, I think it should. <laughs> I have a pretty sleek living room. <laughs> I wish it was Trump singing like Billy the Big Mouth Bass. I think it's even better. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. The trout is an animatronic talking fish with a big personality. I am the hugely bigliest fish in the pond. Watch his hands flap. I mean, it's a, it's this is not a real product. I I can buy one right now. The hugest bigliest. I can legitimately buy one right now. I think if you buy one, they write a vote for Kamala Harris for you. It's it's a write-in ballot that you're signing. That would actually be wicked funny. <laughs> That's the only way this is possible. Oops. <laughs> okay. Because you know what's funny about this? Like, the reason it has to be something like that, like a Democrat doing this, is like half the replies are like, of course Trump would slap his name on this. It's like, what are you nuts? No, because it's, it's, he wouldn't, he'd be like, I, that, I but don't, if they're advertising it on Newsmax. Maybe it's not a liberal thing. I think at the end of this, it says who paid for it. Let's find out. Now we have to get to the end of this fucking thing. Shit. Yeah. He makes speech after speech in high fidelity sound. Some bass, a bad fish, crazy fish, criminal fish, and druggy fish. <laughs> but some bass, a good fish, and I only love some of them. Mount him to your wall or use Who the is doing the voice? They should have gotten Gillis to do it. Oh, that would have been fucking awesome. I don't think he would, but. Oh, I bet he would. You think he would be the voice of Trumpy Trout? If he could choose what was said, the guy is a Netflix show. I don't think he's. I don't think he needs Trumpy Trout money. Oh no! I mean, they would probably pay him like stupid money to do it. I can't imagine this is that that much of a money making endeavor. <laughs> that guy's a real asshole. <laughs> like it's, it's the lines just write themselves. <laughs> sure. Yes. Seems like you're really tapped into the the tires writing room. Gra grab him by the octopusy. <laughs> Yeah. Hire this guy for Gillian Keeves. <laughs> Send this tape to John McKeever. Stat. Yeah. Tell him I'm I'm in. And to display him proudly on your desk. Now you'll never miss a Trumpy Trout rally. I'm building a new pond and the bass will pay for it. Set him to motion activated. Just this is it's hacky. It's like it's a hack parody commercial. Hold on. I know Wait, what I tell me to hold on. I'm on a podcast. There's a phone number here. We should call it and ask them about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is where, you know what? Uh, Kirk told me a few weeks ago when we called the FBI, he goes, you never thought of doing this, did you? And I said, no. Nope. <laughs> I got to learn from the best. Go right to the source. <laughs> All right. Let's call Trumpy Trout. <laughs> Hello. And thank you for calling okay. to get yourself a Trumpy Trout. The funniest chat ever. <laughs> Thanks. I'll take it from here. To ensure the best customer service, <laughs> this call may be recorded. To place okay. your order, say order or press one now. Order. Status of an existing order. Great. Now you can catch your very own limited edition Trumpy Trout. 
for just fifty nine ninety nine plus nine ninety nine shipping and handling. <laughs> Each chumpy trout comes Should I try with to get official, someone on the make phone? Make fishing great yes. again. Fishing license and a certificate of authenticity. And remember, when oh, you order work. today, we'll instantly upgrade you to the deluxe hey, chumpy yeah, trout. Quiet, you yappy bitch. And absolutely <laughs> free. Just say or key in how many you'd like today. How many? <laughs> 47. Hit zero. Sorry, I didn't get that. Just key in. Tell you what, we'll just put you down for one Trumpy trout. <laughs> Let's continue. What? Now we'll get I your name zero. along with your billing and shipping information. No, 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 no. Check our- <laughs> All right. Go back. <laughs> call again? Yeah, call again. We got to get an operator. I fucked up. I thought if we ordered Hello. Now, we'd talk <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Donald. To get yourself a trumpy trap. Let's hear the, entire, the ha- entire catalog. <laughs> Thanks. I'll take it from here. To ensure the best customer service, this call may be recorded. To place your order, say order or press one now. To check the status of an existing order, say status or press two. Or for more information about trumpy trout before placing your order, just say information. Or press three. I guess that's what we want. Information. I'm sorry I missed that. You've that's reached right. the Trumpy Trout order line. Thank you. Sure. To become everyone's favorite fish, Trumpy Trout is here. This animatronic. <laughs> I don't think this is going to get us anywhere. A big personality. It might. Just mount him. I don't think there's a human that works for this company. Moves and his giant fins flap. <laughs> Trumpy Trout is motion activated. Or you can turn him on to let him delight everyone while he makes speech after speech in high fidelity sound. This is crazy. And now you can catch your very own limited edition Trumpy Trout. I want to talk to a human being. $9.99 plus $9.99 Zero usually takes and care of that. Each Trumpy Trout comes with an official Make Fishing Great Again fishing Jesus license Christ. and a certificate of authenticity. <laughs> fishing license. And remember, when you order today, We'll instantly <laughs> upgrade you to the deluxe Trumpy Trout with oh, a goodie. desktop fan. The deluxe. Absolutely free. <laughs> Just say or key in the how del- many you'd like today. No, no you oh, bitch. I didn't get that. <laughs> Give me an operator. Operator. Tell you what. We'll just put you down for one no! Trumpy Trout. <laughs> Let's continue. Now we'll get your name. Operator. Along with your billing and shipping information. Craig Ironhead Oconee. Please check our phone directory to see if we have your current address. Please what? wait a moment. Whoa, 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 what? For security purposes, <laughs> I will just verify your street number. Whoa, 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 whoa. One, eight. <laughs> what? You've ordered from here before? Oh, that's not my address. Oh, okay. I, I left the volume up. I'm sorry I missed your response. I show your street number as. No, yeah, yeah, don't, whatever this is, you don't want to play. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna end this. <laughs> yeah, all right. Like, we're not, I, there's not a human that works for this company. I went to get the the volume. I'm like, do they actually fucking know? <laughs> well, that's devastating. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I guess we're not gonna find out. <laughs> that's cr- what boy. What a scam! This is what your network, Newsmax, is hawking out there. <laughs> <laughs> the other, the other guy. I sent it to. He was like, "I have no idea what you're talking about." I sent him the uh, the website, and he goes, "Oh boy!" <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Totally worth it." <laughs> this is what this is what you guys are hawking, and they're just like, "So, how many Trumpy trouts would you like to buy?" <laughs> That's or, their whole process. So the demand is so high, they're like, "Let's just cut to it." How many do you want? <laughs> Obviously, it's minimum one. You're not just calling to fuck around here. We said zero, and they're like, well, I'll just put you down for I'll one. put you down for one. Why not? <laughs> Do you want to continue this commercial? Jeez. No, no, no. I think that's enough. <laughs> I guess that's real. Yeah, but this is... I'll go. I'll skip right to the end. Oh, actually. yeah. And then I'll show you why. The I names know. of these bastards. Yeah. <laughs> Takes a lot of cards. Edition collectible from Top Dog Direct. Order now at trumpytrout.com. That's trumpytrout.com. If you have, <laughs> I mean, that's just editing. That could be. Yeah, I know, but that's when I was like, hmm. Well, I don't know. We're not going to get any answers from these shysters. <laughs> this might be Craig. Can we have? Can we have an operator, please? I'll put you down for one. 
that's, that's, that's uh, very fishy. I've used that joke twice in two days on two different shows. I'm not proud of either one. Very fishy. Yeah. All right. Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Where do you want to go? Uh, let's talk about this Andrew Schultz thing. It's interesting yeah. when you hear someone talk about a guy in a way that like you might agree with, but the mouth that it's coming out of is so punchable. You hate it a lot. Yeah. That you're like, oh, there's no chance I'll ever agree with what's being said here. Right. Um, what's the backstory to this? I, I'll tell you the backstory. It seems like Ethan Klein wants people to like him. So he just jumps on any train that drives by. <laughs> I so I guess Ethan Klein has ripped the Nelk boys to shreds. You know the Nelk boys. Yep. First My favorite thing they've done is interview OJ Simpson, even though they didn't really get any good questions in. Yeah, they also were, like got banned from YouTube for a while for the Trump interview. Um. So yeah, they they have uh, happy dads. They're very successful. These guys. And uh, I'm blanking on this guy's name. Bradley. What the fuck's this kid's name? I have no clue. Yeah. And well. He's sharp, folks. He's my, <laughs> the backbone of this program. Well, this guy, whose name hopefully they say in one of these clips, I'll find who's, it. who's one of the Nelk boys, had uh, Ethan Klein on. And if you don't know Ethan Klein, he hosts the H3H3 podcast. Steiny and Sneeko? No. <laughs> I don't think that's him. Live in New Hampshire? I don't, I don't think he's Sneeko. Uh, all right. Let me see here. Uh, it doesn't matter. We'll figure yeah. it out. Um but Ethan Klein is just kind of an asshole that doesn't really have opinions. It's more he just wants to be a shit stir and yet also wants people to like him. So I guess he trashed this kid that's interviewing him, one of the Nelk boys. His name's and Brad. Really, Brad. What's up? His name's Brad or Steiny, one of those two. It's not Bradley Stein, is it? It can't be. It says Brad and Steiny. Okay, it's Brad. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so Brad... Uh, apparently had an interview with Andrew Schultz that people criticized and Ethan Klein saw this as his opportunity to make nice with the guy who's interviewing him because he's spineless and also dump on Andrew Schultz, who isn't in the room. So perfect mix of opportunity for Ethan Klein here. You've ripped me multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. What was the, ripped what was me the... like five times, bro. We got it. We got never said the one, one. I've never said one so, negative thing. So here's what I'll say about that. Well, which which time? Because you read me a lot. <laughs> good, good, good for this guy, honestly, for calling him out for it. You, you and this is like pretty much right out of the gate, where he's like, "Yeah, you shit on me a lot, Ethan." Did you think I wasn't going to mention that? Well, Ethan never gets called out on anything, and you could tell. Do you ever see the Bill Burr clip when he was like, what "The fuck's the matter with you?" <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ethan says some wild stuff, like when during the Rogan controversy, he went crazy. Yeah, and like he never explains any of these things. He doesn't back up his words, and I'm sure this will be a thing where eventually, if Schultz ever calls him out, Ethan will do the spineless thing where he'll talk shit until he can't anymore. You know, and that's what he's doing with this Brad guy. Well, here's the thing: like, I'm kind of like a messy, petty. <laughs> so I've ripped a lot of people, so I don't specifically remember, but I am in a phase of life where I like am in the mood. I think it's good to like build bridges and talk to people who you can connect with. Oh, that's weird. Cause this guy happens to be in the room. Let's see if you torch a bridge with anyone else in this interview. Yes. <laughs> that's so, interesting that you're in a mood to do that only with people where who can enhance your brand by having you on. That's right. <laughs> Tickly you recall. Uh, you ripped me for Shoals okay. bad, which is was a crazy take on your part because I know you didn't watch the whole thing and you were going with the majority. I I personally think I I, I quite frankly don't know the backstory between this guy and Schultz, but like mm -hmm. the way he's calling out Ethan Klein makes me like this kid. No, I like him a lot. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I yeah, have yeah. a response to that. Um, you're right. I agree. I uh at the time <laughs> what a spineless creep. Does Ethan Klein have something up with him? What do you mean? He's like twitching a lot. Oh, I don't I don't know enough about him. Maybe he's always like that. I have no idea. Mm. I feel like you guys are very like, for my audience, very hateable. Just because like it's just the antithesis of like everything that like our community is. And that's not necessarily a fair assessment. I think being looking at Nelk fairly, you guys are obviously representing like a more bro y 
culture, mm-hmm. but like that's that's not necessarily bad. And th- it's so- weird that you've only taken the it's opportunity exactly. to look at this fairly when he's in the room with you. Yeah. That's so weird. That's so what a crazy coincidence that the one time you've chosen to look at this fairly is when he's on the show with you. Yeah, <laughs> he's like fuck. He remembered. <laughs> but here's the thing: is like if I had fucking whoever on, like Shab, let's say. Like, I probably wouldn't be as harsh as I would be if he wasn't on the show, maybe. But, like, I don't go crazy hard at Brendan Shaw. You know what I mean? Like, we make fun of him. I don't think I say anything about Brendan Shaw that I couldn't defend why I said it or why I thought that way. Or anyone, you know, whoever you want to say, Stuttering John or whoever. Like, I think I can defend everything I say about these people. Whereas Ethan Klein goes nuts on people. And yeah. calls them calls them Nazis and white mm-hmm. supremacists and all the hack stuff that you do to insult someone and take them down. And then when he's with them, he's like, you know what? Like you guys don't necessarily represent what we we represent, but there's nothing wrong with that actually. Now that I think about it, uh, Nicola in the chat said uh, he has Tourette's, and I looked it up, and he does have Tourette's. Oh, where'd it go, Craig? I didn't say anything bad. I said, does he have something wrong? He said, Look with at him? this twitchy creep. <laughs> he said he's probably on drugs. You were clearly hinting at that. We all felt it, and I moved on right away. He was either nervous or he had uh, fucking Tourette's. Mm. <laughs> Found out. Said, look wrong. at look at Retsy over here. Is what you said. And I said I don't really like to make jokes about things like that. His name's, his name's Go back. Roll back the tape. <laughs> you guys are obviously representing like a more broy culture mm-hmm. but like that's that's not necessarily bad and th- so i think the my criticism of you guys really started around like covid around like being yeah. opening the gym and like having like riots <laughs> outside of <laughs> martin's gym but like now that that stuff's passed by and like you know yeah I, now that you guys were clearly yeah. right about certain things and my stance was indefensible <laughs> now that now you, you know were what? Right. you guys aren't so bad <laughs> No, you're right, and you're four feet to my left. <laughs> yeah. You know, sure, I called you guys fucking Nazis. <laughs> but, but now that we're in the same room, and I can't really defend my point on that, I think you're a pretty good guy. <laughs> it's kind of doing their best to navigate through those really crazy times. Mm-hmm. So I, I've, I've, I've become less judgmental, I think, in, in that regard. And, and in some cases, I was too harsh on people, for sure. But it was a crazy time. Yeah, you so, were harsh as fuck on me on that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, no, 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 let's stick on that. You were harsh. <laughs> oh, does he expect people to be like, oh, I forgive you? That's that's really what I hate, and it's why I liked Dave Smith. Uh, did you watch his debate with Cuomo, Chris Cuomo? Uh, I saw clips. I didn't watch the whole thing. It's very good. Oh, I, he, like, he buries him. It's it's uh, watch the whole thing if you ever get a chance because it's very good. And the reason I liked it is because. Dave kept pointing out, uh, and I will say the one thing I didn't like is um, Dave Smith and Patrick Bet David kept using the word like apology, and I don't think that's necessarily what like that that put a weird feel on it. Like Chris Cuomo had to apologize; it, it, it slanted their argument in a way I didn't love. But mm-hmm. the reason I loved what Dave did was like you can't just call for people to be fired, and call for their lives to be ruined, and then just go. Ah, yeah, it was a crazy time. We were all saying a lot of things. You I've know? actually, I've been quite complimentary of Chris Cuomo lately because he seems to be not red pilled, but not completely brainwashed by where he was. Well, that was actually Dave Smith's contention: is you don't get to now come on and be like, "Hey, you guys were right, man. Hey, crazy, right? Like, yeah, we were all saying crazy stuff." See, no, 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 like. You went after Rogan. You went after people's jobs. You went like you talked about how people should be fired for not getting the vaccine, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And you were wrong. So you should like walk that back. You actually should apologize for that stuff. See, and I again, hate- like asking for a po- an apology just feels like a weird thing for a comedian to do. But I totally understood why he was doing it. And I liked that he was doing it. Yeah, but you also don't want you wanted them to think normally, and he's finally doing it. Why would you fucking be like? No, you're not allowed to. Like, well, because Chris Cuomo was saying we didn't do anything wrong. Right. But I mean, well, you no, wake, you did. I feel like if you wake up, you wake up. Like, I understand being brainwashed. Yeah, I guess want. that was Cuomo's point. I, I, I would recommend you watch it. I thought it was very good. And I, 
I liked uh, Dave Smith's point. But point being, I guess you're not on my side on this one because my point with Ethan Klein is like, you fucking trash these people, and now that you're in the same room with them, you get to be like, with with Ethan oh, Klein, yeah. you can hear the phoniness just pouring out of his mouth right there. <laughs> That's the yeah. Difference. Cuomo does seem more genuine than Ethan Klein. I'll give you that. Yeah. Where where Dave Smith really whopped him though is when he was like, uh, he's like, I never said that, and he's like, pull up the clip. They play a, like, a six minute video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is uh, his apology here. Okay. I felt yeah, and I'm building towards an apology. Okay, we're well, allowed to continue. So um, so like yeah, I think I had some some bias and prejudice against. Uh, the Nelk boys, other than the COVID, I think you guys did some weird like Rubet stuff. I don't even know if you were part of the gang by then that seemed kind of scammy, but like that's all been f- long ago. And creators, I mean, what this is what I hate when people do. And uh, Brad is about to refute this. This is what I hate when people do when they're like, I trashed you, and there was some stuff I don't even really remember. It was some crazy stuff, like, but got you know what? I'm over it. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. You said horrible things about me. You don't get to be over it. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. It's not for you to be over. Found like it. if I if I spit in Craig's face and you know the next day Craig brings it up to me. I'm like, Craig, I'm so over that, man. <laughs> We're still talking about this? That was yesterday. But no, but don't don't even worry about it. I've moved on. <laughs> It's like dude, you got that pissed and you can't even remember why. If I get right. that mad about something, I remember exactly why. Right. Been f- long ago, and creators, I mean, what creator isn't running a scam these days? Pound it, bro. Crazy. <laughs> That's a crazy non apology. <laughs> no, I'm not. I didn't Holy apologize shit. yet. I didn't apologize yet. That was That's funny. just a joke. That's that just... was funny. Yeah, he's trying to be funny, but like, uh, it doesn't really come off that great. You got denied on the pound it, too, which was very funny. But you know what? Like, to your point about Cuomo, there is something to be said for like Ethan Klein realizing he's wrong. Like if he just went on and did that, I wouldn't even be playing these clips. I wouldn't give a fuck about any of this. Mm-hmm. What I find interesting, he's like, listen, back, way back then, you remember way back then? Ancient times. Back yeah. then, I was fucking crazy, man. I <laughs> said, oh, did I say some wacky things? <laughs> you, know, you know Ethan Klein of yesteryear. He would burn bridges. Right. He would say unkind things about people. He'd fly off the handle for no reason. Anyways, let's get into Andrew Schultz. <laughs> I think that I was just riffing off that and being like, who the f- is this tiny guy? And trying to be funny mostly. Sure. But I think what changed is I've learned a lot about Schultz and I hate, I think he's actually an asshole. Oh, what? good. Well, at least you're not saying any crazy shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it wasn't Brad, it was Steiny. <laughs> yeah. At least you're not just flying off the handle about people you don't know. And listen, I don't know Andrew Schultz. Maybe he's an asshole. <laughs> but, but two minutes ago, we heard this guy go, listen, I said some shit I shouldn't have said about you, and I apologize for that. You know what? I've grown. Anyways, who's not in the room? Ah, Andrew Schultz. We burned the Schultz bridge. <laughs> I've seen the way he talks to his guests. He's been in things with like a few guests where he just comes off as such a hole, f- and I mean, I, I on the top of my but head. Hey, like, you know what? This is all fine. If you like, we talk this way about people. I talk this way about Chris D'Elia or the fucking Joe Matarese or whoever. Mm-hmm. Find it, but have that energy. Don't come on a guy's show who you shit on and go. You know what? I shouldn't do that anymore. I shouldn't be that guy anymore. And then in the same fucking sentence, he wasn't done apologizing to these idiots. Before he started, went in on Schultz. <laughs> like, you're literally saying, I shouldn't do that to people. Anyways, this Schultz is a real piece of shit. <laughs> them, I could certainly recall them if I thought about it for a minute. Uh, Isn't, they go on to, like, use Shane as an example of him being an asshole to his guests. Right. And it's like... They're friends. Schultz is in on- Shane's he's, show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this whole thing. Yeah, don't 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 have pity for Shane Gillis when you know Ethan Klein would have been fucking eviscerating him in 2019. Oh yeah, uh, I'm sure he did actually. Probably. <laughs> yeah, probably did. Um, online trend. I don't remember this one. Off the top of my oh, so there. I I think uh, Ethan says something very telling here. Let's hear it. 
Wait, going back and watching that interaction, I see, I feel like I can see it more clearly that like, he's just, he's being such a colossal douche to you. Yeah. And, uh, totally unwarranted. I don't know why he had to, so I'm on your side and I apologize, especially if you're going through it. I, I, uh, you see what's happening right now. I do. I do hate to make people feel worse when they're in a bad spot. And like, you didn't really deserve. Uh, you didn't do anything wrong. You know, you were okay, just sitting wait, there. Can I, can I? Can I ask you this? Sure. I like. I like this kid. Yeah. I'll never like. I'm not going to listen to the Nelk Boys now. But I like this kid, where he, he picks up on something that's happening, where he's like, "So I don't. I don't know enough about the Nelk Boys to know the trend that's happening online. But I do know that people are starting to turn on Andrew Schultz and call him out for all sorts of different things. And Ethan Klein may feel the tide turning on there. And Brad, or whatever his name is, <laughs> picks up on that immediately. I, I like that I'm a fan of this guy now, and I don't even know his fucking name. But <laughs> Nelly Stine. boy. Steiny, I think. <laughs> yeah, one of them. I think that a lot of people are starting to say that online and like are noticing what you're just noticing. I have, n- I have, I am not connected with that at all. Okay. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, no, not at all. You're not tapped in online. Your whole presence isn't on the internet. I'm, I'm a free thinker. <laughs> Oh, gee. Oh, are people? Oh, God. Is there a subreddit that shits on Andrew Schultz day and night? I didn't realize that. <laughs> oh, no. Are more and more people making fun of Schultz? <laughs> Has he gotten so big that obviously the tide would now start to turn on him? <laughs> I had no idea. God damn it. I wish I had my finger on the pulse just once. Ending and you're going with, no, I mean what they're saying about Schultz. Oh, I don't know what people say about Schultz either. Kind of, well, who gives a f- if people are hating Schultz? I mean, then oh, why? Oh, jeez, I that? just stumbled into the opinion that everyone has on this guy. Whoops. <laughs> oh, is that, what, is that daisies. Hap- is that what's happening? Why I feel like I have armor and can say whatever the fuck I want on him? Oh my god! Oh, I gotta tell you, I was worried I was being too edgy. I didn't realize everyone hated this guy, <laughs> and it was now comfortable for me to shit on him, kind of the way it was comfortable for me to shit on you during the pandemic. It's gonna be it's gonna be Ethan in a second. Be like, hey, guys, his haircut, ass. <laughs> listen, listen, buddy. If you thought that I opportunistically shit on you during COVID because it was kind of the easy take to have that would get me f- praise, and now that I'm in the room with you and the tide is kind of turning on you, and I'm shitting on Schultz because that's sort of a cool opinion to have, and I could be at the forefront of that. <laughs> That's a wild theory, buddy. I don't know where you came up with that. <laughs> that he's a giant douche. Yeah, no, I was just curious if like this is something you're actually going yeah. with the trend or this is a genuine. No, it's a genuine feeling. I feel like that one is more, that's a sourced, informed opinion that I don't like him. Based on what? Internet trends. You just, <laughs> so you watched his show and that's a, so if I say Ethan Klein is a cunt right now, mm-hmm. that. Ethan would acknowledge that because I watched this interview, that's a sourced and formed opinion. Yep. Yep. Like I'm going based on nothing other than this one interview. Well, I've and other things I've seen of Ethan Klein's in the past, but just like what's online. I'm just going off of that. And this is a sourced and formed opinion. He's not citing things behind the scenes. He's not talking about an interaction he had with Schultz or anything. He's like, I watched his show. And he was somewhat rude to Shane Gillis once. <laughs> yeah, they hate each other. <laughs> uh, but here's the other guy just giving Ethan like an example, and then <laughs> he's gonna okay. be a, a big timer. <laughs> All right. Only beef with with uh, Scholes is that I went on his podcast almost three years ago now, and he's like, "Yeah, when I come to LA, I'll come to yours." And he hasn't. That's the kind of guy he is. He's a, he's a big. <laughs> How would you know that, Ethan? <laughs> That's the kind of guy he is. That's what That's I'm the saying. Kind of guy he is. What, inviting someone on a podcast and then getting probably too big to respond to his own DMs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that crazy. Now, the Nelk boys are probably the same size, I think. Sure, I get I get that. And, like, maybe, I don't know their relationship. Maybe that was rude of Andrew. But, again, for Ethan to jump in after ha- having this whole speech about how he wants to be more aware of, like, hey, man, I that was wrong what I did to you. Anyways, that's the exact kind of guy Andrew Schultz is. This Mm -hmm. anecdotal information you've presented me, that's Mm -hmm. how I know him to be as a man. That's the fabric of his being. I don't think I like this other guy with the hat. Not the guy that you've been praising, the other guy. He's like, you know what I don't like about him? He had me on his show, is essentially what I'm hearing. And he was supposed to do my show and didn't. 
That's, <laughs> it's not petty at all. Again, Schultz could be an asshole. I don't know the guy. I just don't care for this <laughs> this approach to it. Big time guy. Like all of a sudden, he he won't shut the f up about selling Madison Square Garden and like that he's. The oh, uh, here it is. Oh, there's a little jealousy. I gotta tell you guys, if I ever sell out Madison Square Garden, it'll be the only thing I ever talk about. For of course. The rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> now, like again. You could make fun of things Schultz did, like the video he made with his dad, who I guess his dad actually has Alzheimer's, which made me feel bad about making fun of that video. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever. No harm, no foul. <laughs> but, like, there are things that Schultz does that are definitely corny and mockable. But what you're saying, Ethan, is that he's a bad human being. Right. And your example of that is he sold out Madison Square Garden and promoted it. <laughs> That's kind of his entire thing. That's how he got to where. That's how he sold out Madison Square Garden. Is promoting all those sold out shows that he does. This piece of shit sold out Madison Square Garden. He was proud of himself. <laughs> I got. Can I tell you something? I have a feeling Ethan Klein's not a big Tony Hinchcliffe fan either. <laughs> you know, he's he's a real dick. I don't know why. I just have a feeling. Coming to com what? to comedy and like he'll you'll he'll do your show. Or you'll do his show, and then a year later, he's like, I'm too big for Bradley. He's that kind of guy. <laughs> Do you have right? any idea of that, Ethan? He had him on his own show, which by this definition would be a bigger platform. Right, that's a good thing. That's a, Can I tell you something? I would much rather do the flagrant podcast than have Andrew Schultz on here. For sure. <laughs> not <laughs> even a debate. It's not close. <laughs> not even a debate. You know, it would be nice that video would probably get more views than our usual podcast, but having me on his would expose me to millions of people. That's right. So you sometimes be thankful the for the opportunities people give you, not beg for more. <laughs> and I, like, listen, I know it's a different situation. The Nelk boys are a lot bigger than me. Um, so maybe they don't need to go on Andrew's podcast as much, but you see my point ultimately is like, that seems like a very petty reason to be like, this person's a piece of shit. For sure. <sighs> All right. Well, yeah, Ethan Klein seems like kind of a douchebag. Does that wrap that up just about? I can't believe you said that. Well, I'll you know what? If I ever have him on, I'll apologize. <laughs> good. And he has to accept it. That's good of you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Where to now? I guess we got to do this uh, Joe Rogan thing with Ty Rivera. Ty Rivera's back, baby. Back and big. Do you now? I know you don't like this. Did you notice the hat that he was wearing? No. He's wearing a "Make America Great Again" hat. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Yeah. Ty's kind of growing on me. Me too. <laughs> yeah. You know what? He might be winning this over. I I disagree with him here, but he's kind of uh -huh. winning me over. He's now presenting his arguments for the most part in the right ways. I don't agree with him on all of it. I agree. He makes some fair points. I'll just, the one thing I hate that Ty does, and we're going to hear some of it is I'm a comedy veteran. So you should respect what I say. Mm -hmm. I know Joe Rogan and have a relationship with him. So Joe Rogan should treat me a certain way. I hate that angle of Ty's act. Right. But other than that, like he's, he makes some good points. <laughs> sure does. Um, first we got, uh, his ex this is him explaining his expertise. This, so this is what I hate. Ty, don't do that. I understand like Howard Stern was very good at this. Dave Portnoy is very good at this. Kirk Minahan is good at this. But a lot of people aren't. <laughs> and I don't know if Ty is great at conveying why he's the king of all media, shall we say. I've been really busy the last two weeks, so it took me a while to get around to it. But I did watch the full special, which is part of what held me up, was that I wanted to see the full special before I actually commented on it, because how are you going to review something that you haven't actually seen? I mean, I could go off other people's opinions, but what do I think of it as a stand-up comedian? Because for anybody that doesn't know, full disclosure, I was a regular at the Comedy Mothership for about a year. So I do have some insight on the way that the club works, and I also also have been doing stand-up for 21 years, and I do undeniably know the mechanics of stand-up comedy. And that's what you guys don't respect enough about me. I don't see enough praise for this. Is like when I talk about Joe Rogan, even if you guys disagree with me, I've been to the mothership once. That's so, true. 
Come on, guy. You know, I have been in that building, so you should respect what I say. <laughs> like, that to me is a crazy opinion, that he worked at the club for a year. I think what he's trying to just... I know what he's trying to say, but... It's, I know. he's trying. I mean, he's trying to say he's a comic, basically. Not only he, that, but it's like what I'm about to say carries more weight because I know the guy. But he does. He's not like friend. Like Joe Rogan doesn't know him. That's the problem. We, we all know that. <laughs> I'm sure. Like I, I guarantee you, he knows Joe Rogan. But I think Joe Rogan's probably at the point where he doesn't necessarily know Ty Rivera. Is. To be fair, you know though, I mean? looking at this fellow with the face tats and piercings and stuff, Rogan probably remembers his Just face. stand out. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's fair. It's like, oh yeah, I remember your face, not anything that came out of your mouth. <laughs> well, yeah, that it's like I, I would allow. Like when Seinfeld talks this way, you're like, I mean, you created fucking Seinfeld. You know what I mean? Like, I might find it douchey, but you're, you're one of the speak. greats. Yeah, you can talk that way. <laughs> yeah. When you're a guy who has trouble getting booked at the Creek in the Cave in Austin, I don't know if you'd be talking about that, about things that way. I guess that's my point. <laughs> uh, but here is no friends. Okay. So here's what the deal is. Some people online are saying this is a terrible special and other people are saying <laughs> it's not that bad. There are far more that are saying that it's terrible than there are the not that bad. But unpopular opinion, I think both of them are correct. Because Hold on, hold on. But I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was either. I thought it was. Did you watch it? Yeah, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. Did you hate it? Uh, most of it. Oh, really? Yeah. So you're in the, it was terrible camp. Kind of. I, I also, I also watched this video. Um, I think it might've been too lazy to try. I forget. Mm -hmm. um, explaining how Rogan ripped off Gringo Poppy in this special. And after seeing it, you're like, holy fuck, he did. Oh, really? I haven't seen that. I'll find it and send it to you. You're going to. No, not. no, no. I don't want to watch it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was some jokes like he did um, the joke about how much it would be easier to, you know, be gay. Oh, that was the worst part of the special. Yeah. But like yeah, yeah, yeah. there was parts that there, were, there were a couple jokes. I said to me, Rogan, it's it felt like he was. Uh, slamming the gas, pumping on the brakes, slamming the gas, pumping on the brakes. Like he never got into a groove throughout the special. I thought there were good jokes, and there were. Jo I watched it with a couple friends live, mm -hmm. and there was a point where I literally turned to them and go, "That was fucking corn. That was a terrible joke." I felt that way for most of it. The only thing I thought was kind of cool was him talking about, you know, the stuff we've talked about. I thought that was actually very good. I'm surprised you didn't like that more. Those parts I when he talked about like the controversy with the like him and uh, all the vaccine stuff and the N word stuff. I thought that was all very well done. So I that was the only joke I liked was when he was talking about the N word compilation and he was like, "Oh my god, there's six minutes left." <laughs> like that was funny, but the the rest of it I was like, "Does this?" It didn't have like it felt like it didn't have any direction. Oh yeah, I thought it, I'm in the. It, I thought it was fine camp. I thought it was frankly better than Chris Rock's live special. Which, yeah, I, I, not not that that was a great special, but that's like good company to be in, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I it, it, I thought it was exactly what I expect. Here's the problem with Rogan's career now, that he's made four hundred and fifty million dollars from Spotify, and has the biggest comedy club in the world. People expect like people are right. like, oh, well, then I guess that means he has to be George Carlin. So I, I've i never really enjoyed his stand up. No, but that's yeah. fine. But I, I thought Triggered was a good special. But here's the thing. I've never really enjoyed Jerry Seinfeld's stand up. There's a lot of it that I think is good. And some of it that I think is great. And a lot of it I acknowledge just isn't for me. But mm -hmm. I've like Seinfeld is not a. Com just, if you just took his stand up and nothing else, I'm not like, oh my God, Jerry Seinfeld is so much better than Stephen Wright or Mitch Hedberg or Brian yeah. Regan or no. guys who do like similar things to Seinfeld. Seinfeld does though, is he's stuck in like 80s style comedy and hasn't left it. Well, right. But my point is like, just because you're famous, I don't think it's a knock on you that you're not 
the and then Seinfeld I think is a better comic than Rogan. I'm not saying mm-hmm. that, but that's kind of my point. Is like just because Rogan's famous doesn't mean he has to be one of the greatest standups of all time. Mm-hmm. I don't think he would put himself in that category. The problem. Like, the problem with this special, though, and I'm going back to the Shab video I watched, is he was so critical of Shab's comedy and everything, and he's doing bits from Gringo Poppy, basically. Yeah. It wasn't, I wouldn't say he was so critical, by the way. Probably not critical enough, but... <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, he... <laughs> look at the grand scheme of things, he was like two years in, and he's got a special. It's like... Yeah, I mean, there's some stuff... I think what bothers people about Rogan, and you'll hear Ty Rivera get into it, but, like... Rogan talks about comedy a lot and really respects the art form and the craft. So does Seinfeld. I I think people confuse that with Rogan saying I'm the greatest comic of all time. He, you know what I mean? Like I think Rogan can have a conversation with Adam Sandler about how difficult stand up is and how much work it takes and everything. And I can look at both guys and say neither of these guys are in my top 10 comics. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, uh, for sure. I so that's what I think people confuse is like the the sort of pomposity with which he talks about stand up versus like his actual output. But I don't take that as because he reveres stand up, he has to be one of the greatest at it. No, but I I would have assumed this special was going to be significantly better. I didn't. I thought it was that's that's the funny thing. I think that might be how you have to watch this special. And like it is that I thought it would be fine, and that's exactly what it was. I don't even know if it was fine. I thought it was pretty bad. I thought it was fine. I, I, I there's a couple points where I laughed, and there's a couple points where I didn't. <laughs> I think exactly, but I, I think I'm in the camp of being in between terrible and it was fine. Like I don't think okay. it was the worst either direction, or the best either direction. All right, um, but I I don't know. I I thought it was pretty bad. Let's see if Ty convinces either of us. By yeah. the way, I, most people agree with you. By the way, Say really? I'm, in the, I'm in the minority, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm At not- least online. Well, that's hard to gauge, too, where it's like, of course, that's going to be the opinion online, you know? Right. Right. Opinion. I think both of them are correct, because as far as it being a special goes, it was terrible. But as far <laughs> as it being just a regular set, it wasn't that bad. And I know some of you are going to refer kind of, back. That's, that's kind of, of a perfect way to look at it. That's ma- That's kind of the debate we were having. Yeah. <laughs> So I look at it differently. Like the fact that it was live and he pulled it off to me was bigger than judging it. Like is every joke amazing? You know, there's no way he's using that one. If he's putting it out as a regular special, he's going to do a different show. (laughs) Um, Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It, It was, I thought it was just so just the way he talks about it and how, you know, I had to follow these murderers, <laughs> all that shit. Yeah, it did. It's it didn't seem. But here's the thing. So this is another thing. And it comes up uh, in this video and others that I've seen from like podcast cringe and stuff. Um, people are mad, like uh, not mad. Well, they, they are mad <laughs> because based based on what they're putting online. They are actually mad about Joe Rogan's special um, because like in the Sandler cover when he's at, when he has Sandler on. He talks about how much he prepared for it and like tried to get every word down and memorize it. And he was doing uh, X amount of sets a night and blah, blah, blah. And people were like, he's lying. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, no, no. I 100% believe that. Even if you don't like it, I absolutely believe he was working that hard at it. Well, do you follow? Rogan does not seem like a lazy guy to me at all. Not at all. Do you follow um, the mothership on Instagram? Uh, Probably. Well, if you if you do and you see the stories or whatever, he's up a lot. Yeah. Well, the problem is I thought uh, Ty points this out, but I thought it. I, I had this thought being there, or even before, like that. Pl- like Rogan wanted to make a place like the Comedy Store where comics can work out material. Mm-hmm. That place sells out months in advance New every audience. single night. Yeah, new audience uh, every night. A random Tuesday in f- October is going to be sold out already. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, and the people there, like a lot of them flew down. This is a vacation trip for them, or it's a bachelor party or so. You know what I mean? Like people are ready to laugh. So that's a weird place to work out your material. And I guess the comedy sellers kind of become that in a way also, 
Like yeah. these places aren't like danger fields when Dice recorded the day the laughter died, you know? Right. Is uh is has Gangfest been to Austin yet? No, there was talk of doing it there. There's also Rogan talked about how great Skankfest was, and then maybe he goes, Maybe I'll do a festival in Austin. I'm like, can't you just go to Skankfest? What is wrong with you people? Can you just have Skank host it? Yeah. Split. Rogan should buy Skankfest and just let them do whatever they want. Right. You like, know, just fund the expenses they need. <laughs> yeah. And all the comics you would want on Skankfest are either in New York or Austin at this point. <laughs> the problem Skankfest might have ultimately is like the whole idea, and Lewis says this all the time, like they want to keep it small. It's not going to be for long. Well, so if you only have like, but let's say they do, let's say they do keep it small. If it's 3000 people or whatever, then I think it's like 3000 people a day that are there. Roughly. That's a lot. You're, but it's a lot. But to pay Shane Gillis, Tim Dillon, uh, Whitney Cummings, you know, like whoever, uh, David Tell, Jim Norton, like whoever else they have there, all these headliners mm -hmm. to pay all these guys. Like the amount that they could get if they were being like demanding about it, like mm -hmm. the idea that like Tony Hinchcliffe is there right now and the night before he's selling out an arena. Yeah. If you're really going to pay these guys, you'll have to charge us what? two thousand dollars a ticket you know what's, what i mean what's that fest uh big j done a, a bunch just for um, laughs netflix no it was like a tour i forget what it was but they were doing like oh oddball yeah yeah they could do something like that it wouldn't be the same obviously it's not the same you could have like the major acts do the ones it's tough to, to do it the way they do it would be tough the reason they can pull that off is they are now friends with the biggest comic like Soder, right. Norman List, Shane, Tim Dillon, Nick Mullen, all these guys do it because they're friends with Lewis, not because it's paying them a shit ton of money. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know. I was trying to think of funding. Yeah. <laughs> Back to Ty. All right. To the beginning when I said that Joe Rogan doesn't have any real friends. And if you don't have good comedian friends, it's hard to know what the the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do and that would be true as a person that has been in that world i know that joe rogan has friends like the kid in school that had the nicest car and access to all the cool stuff <laughs> good fair point uh, it's like this i kind of like ty now that ty's not blaming people for unaliving themselves <laughs> right i kind of like ty rivera even if i did like i disagree with him as a whole here, I don't think the special is that bad as we just talked about, but like, I don't think it's a crazy opinion. I like the way he's presenting it now. Like this, <laughs> I actually like from Ty Rivera. Yeah. I don't think it's as bad as he's claiming. And I don't think it was as fine as you're claiming. <laughs> right, Sure. But that's also fine. It's probably most people's opinion, yeah. but like Ty isn't going about it. Here's why I like this video is Ty is not like Joe's special sucked because I can't get into the mothership. Right. Like, that's how we found him, was him just complaining about not getting enough sets at the mothership. This Did this special get Rotten Tomatoed? Oh, you know, I'm sure it must have, right? What was this one, Burn the Boats? Yeah. It got one out of five stars on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, boy. Um, 48%. Well, you know what? I will grant you this. I watched it with friends. We were having a few pops. You have to rewatch it. I, w I certainly wasn't shit faced by any means, but I, I, you know, a little social lubricant. So maybe <laughs> I was just in a good mood. I watched it alone. So maybe that, I'll have to, you watch it alone. I'll invite people over and watch it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, it was the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, which one is this? Not, a, yeah, not a comic. I don't know. <laughs> See, this is where I think things get crazy. I guess this is ultimately why I'm defending the special is like when you get to the point of like, well, Joe Rogan isn't a, I think that's, that's where things get a little nuts. 
But I halfway expected that, even though I was hoping that he would prove me wrong. Because going to see a Joe Rogan comedy special and expecting him to be good at stand-up makes as much sense to me as going to see Britney Spears and expecting her to be a good singer. Now, I love Britney Spears. She's a good But singer. I know she's not a singer. Just like some of you may love Joe Rogan. But more than likely, if you know stand-up at all, you see, know... See, I don't agree with him there. If I went to see Joe Rogan do stand-up, I would expect... I'd expect that. I I would think that's about what I was getting. I would I would expect a few steps above that. I feel like even once the dust settles, whatever the fuck the saying is, he'll be like, that wasn't my best. Yeah, I thought Strange Times or Triggered or one of those, if not both, I thought they were like pretty good. Yeah, for sure. I thought Triggered was his best special. Yeah. Probably mostly because he was like the first person to come out against that shit. I mean, well, here's what I think of Joe Rogan. We... Like, put it this way. We're not having this discussion about Jim Florentine. No. Because Jim Florentine wasn't paid $450 million from Spotify. But that was even for podcasting. No one said, but you see what I'm saying. No one's yeah. like, fucking Florentine's not a comic. You know what I mean? Right. right. Bob Kelly's not a comic. Whatever. Like, I don't think, I didn't watch this special and be like, how did Joe Rogan, how did Netflix allow this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was it was live, so they kind of have to they have to eat it. <laughs> oh, he's not a stand-up comedian. And that's one thing that has always bothered me about him. Because occasionally I would either watch his podcast or I would see clips on different channels that I watch here on YouTube. And he would always be talking about stand-up comedy, waxing poetic about the process of stand-up comedy. And the whole time I would just be watching like, you're not even that good at stand-up comedy. I don't know why you're constantly talking about the process. Also, have you guys paid attention to interviews with any other really big and really good comics? They don't usually spend all their time talking about the process of stand-up comedy. Well, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more so now, but just look at like five years ago, you know? <laughs> Like that, that, that I don't agree with the idea that Rogan's not a comic. If you don't like his comedy, fine, but he's been doing right. it for 30 years and, and he's more, much more famous for other things, but two or been, three other things. Yeah, absolutely. But he's been doing stand up for over 30 years. He works very hard at it and he takes it seriously. Like mm -hmm. that, that's the other issue is like, does Kevin Hart take stand up more seriously than Joe Rogan? Not even close. I don't think I don't think so. Not even close, but, but I bet his You next wouldn't say Kevin Hart's not a stand-up. No, but I think his next special would be significantly funnier than Rogan's. Maybe, but like I've never found Kevin Hart that funny. I have. I like I've never watched a Kevin Hart special and been like, I get why this guy is the most famous man on the planet. <laughs> I understand. Well, like, but like Rogan is he got more famous for acting. And Rogan got more famous for like podcasting or Fear Factor or Cage UFC. Fight commentary. Yeah, um, but I, my point is ultimately you can't say he's not a comic. You can say he's not a good comic, or I don't like him. He is absolutely a comic. He bought and created the most like the hottest comedy club in the world because he loves it so much. And what he's done for comedy, like the reason like Rogan to me is impactful on comedy it has nothing to do with his stand up. But it's more the he, the platform he's given people, the promotion he's given people. And now with the club, like the platform he's given people there is leaps and bounds more. Like look at some of the greats and what they did for comedy. Like what did Steve Martin ever do for stand-ups or Eddie Murphy? You know what I mean? Like Nothing. some of the greatest yeah. ever. What did they do for stand-up as an art form? They ran from it. So like the idea that Rogan, say what you want about him, when he got famous, he enhanced comedy in my opinion now a lot of people would say that's not true because they look at like brendan schaub and say you shouldn't have a career but rogan's also done a lot of good for actually good comics like gillis and normand and ari shafir and plenty of others but he also got schaub out of cage fighting which wasn't going to end well for his life <laughs> like, sure. he's done a sure. lot of good things <laughs> yeah, yeah and schaub was good at fighting uh, yeah he had a fighting incident this way i, I didn't we you can't get to that, but he had some weird video where like he talked about himself as the savior and his wife was like, he was a crazed man. Like him and his wife told two different versions of the same story. It was kind of funny. Hmm. Um, 
which one is this? Uh, fair, <laughs> this is <laughs> fair point. <laughs> all right, you know, Ty, like I said, the guy's not all wrong, you know? He's not all, he's not all wrong. When it comes down to it, yes, there is a process to it. And yes, it is an art form. But at the same time, it's not as deep as he's always trying to make it, unless you are a very color by numbers comedian that isn't naturally funny. And that's what the problem is with Joe Rogan. That's why when you watch his podcast and other comedians tell him jokes, he either doesn't laugh or he'll do that stupid sound where he'll be like, ah. <laughs> and that's him trying to figure out if that's where he's supposed to laugh. So that's why he makes that sound like I'm not going to fully commit to a laugh, but I'm going to make a sound so that I can judge off of the comedian's reactions whether or not I was supposed to actually laugh at that point. That's what's happening with Joe Rogan, if you guys didn't know how to read that. <laughs> this face tattooed son of a bitch if he didn't crack the case. <laughs> Mark Norman's like, this guy's great. We were racking our brain. Why does he do that to Mark Norman? <laughs> I, I genuinely thought he was like shitting on him. And I think I kind of agree with Ty Rivera's point where like he doesn't know if he should be laughing at something or not. Should that's I a, be? <laughs> that's not a terrible point. That was a good point. That was the, that was the last of Ty. That was it for Ty. Yeah, like so like I said, Ty, I'm coming around on Ty. I don't agree with his overall point. And uh, in Ty's defense, I think most of the comments are going to agree with Craig over me. Uh, not in the live chat. Oh, no? No. Uh, what are people saying? Uh, we get it. Mike knows comedy. Craig doesn't and touches kids. Oh no. See, I, I see. I think that's an anti me. <laughs> we get it. Even my wife laughed and she's a dumb bitch. <laughs> okay. All right. That's a pro me. Uh, I think I would say, I would call that one-to-one. -one. It's not as bad as Craig is saying. Uh, Mike has spoken. It was fine. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. Well, these people are going to agree with me. I'm their king. <laughs> <laughs> Your grandfather was like, I never mind. imagine if I thought that way. Anyways, what's Aaron Imholt been up to? <laughs> <laughs> Let us tell you. Think we have time to get to a little uh, steel toe here? Sure. It is boy, it is weird without having the super chats to break up our our segments here. I feel no, naked. We're just, we're just flowing like crazy though. Flying through these. Um yeah, this, this, this will be quick. I want to touch on Steel Toe for a minute, but you weren't here last week, Craig, so let me fill you in. Did you happen to watch our Steel Toe segment? Just I did yes. not. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> well, never, never mind. <laughs> Just pretend you're interested in the show. I have been so fucking busy. Believe me, I know. So what happened to Iso Doe and said, I'm going to... I gotta do some some fall cleaning. He, he gets arrested and was like, where's Craig? <laughs> Guys, Craig is in the Ukraine this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So uh, we talked about Steel Toe last week. I'll catch you up, Craig. Mm -hmm. um, he had a live show recently, uh, 10th anniversary at some bar in Minnesota. I actually passed by St. Cloud, Minnesota in, on our drive to the Dakotas. I should have stopped in. Mm -hmm. But um Aaron did a 10th anniversary show. He was promoting this for a while and then everyone bailed. So Aaron had to do stand up at it. It seemed like kind of a clunky event, but Hey, I, as I said, I give Aaron credit and this is not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for. This is not me backhanded. Um, yeah. It's not a backhanded compliment. It's not exactly what I'm looking for, but good enough. Um, I'm not being smug when I say this, I'm not talking down to him. I'm being genuine. And saying, like, good for him for having anyone there. You know what I mean? Like, a lot his, of po his podcast is relatively the same size as mine. I'm not confident that I would get that amount of people at some bar if we, ha you know what I mean? Like, so good for him, I say. The, the thing I took an interest in <laughs> was the, uh, the, the fallout from that live show. So Aaron was having a grand old time. He started the show with chants. Craig would fit right in here. They started chanting homo to start the show. He does that a lot. <laughs> he sure does. Well, it's, you know what, Craig, it's funny you say that. No, he doesn't. Oh, right. The audience does. Right, right, right. So uh, Aaron does this thing. He's like, guys, guys, before we start chanting, guys, don't keep chanting homo. So they do, of course. And he goes, hey, guys, you wouldn't chant the N word, would you? And then some people yell out the N word. So it feels like a clan rally that he's starting. 
And then the next day, or the, I'm sorry, Monday, he goes on and he's like, guys, we had the greatest time. Oh, don't you dare listen to the haters who tell you we had some awful time. No one was saying anything out of it was. Oh, it was a hoot and a holler. It was a it was a blast at the Steel Toe Live show. Then Patrick Melton did a show that Aaron uh, didn't know anyone had the audio. And Aaron played all the audio. <laughs> then Aaron went on the air and he goes, you know what? I got to take a minute and scold the audience here. I don't know if I can ever do another live show again because of the abhorrent language that you people used. <laughs> He's like, that is really. And then like people called him out and he was like, guys, I'm a performer. I know the line. You people don't. That's kind of a funny approach. Which is like, like, listen, if people are yelling out the N word at my show, I would also be embarrassed and say that was pretty shitty. Like, I don't mm -hmm. want to be part of that type of event. But Aaron's instinct was to provoke it and then celebrate it before he got caught. <laughs> so it seemed a little disingenuous. So that was last week's uh, Steel Toe discussion. And then I found some video from the ninth anniversary show. And I thought, well, certainly this year's show got out of hand. Let's let's take the temperature of what a Steel Toe Live show is like, shall we? Can we see, like, this year got crazy. But let's see what a real Steel Toe Live show is going. Let's go back last year, before the world blew up. And Steel Toe was friends with Nick Ricada. And Nick was going to come on the show. Nick was about to do stand-up. I think this is actually Aaron introducing Nick. Let's see what this show was all about. Calmer, saner times. Nick's fans are the cool colloquialism. Say that, John DeMaron. The colloquialism for Nick's fans are Nickers. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, Aaron, hold on a second. I've got to warn you. It sounds... You're talking about Nick Ricada fans, so I know that's a strong CK sound in there. I'm going to tell you. It sounds dangerously close to a word you're not supposed to say. Well, I feel my greatest fear is that Aaron finds that. I hope he doesn't realize the horrible mistake he's making. And that it's on film. That'd be tough. That would be that'd be terrible. Nickers. Oh, they support him. so therefore I would like you guys to chant. Oh no. <laughs> What I would like you guys to chant while he comes to the stage is after I announce him, if you could chant Nick Ers. Nick Ers. I think it would encourage him. Oh <laughs> Aaron, you have no idea what you're doing. What a monster. Aaron, that sounds dangerously close to another word. Don't you understand? Does that sound okay? <laughs> Fuck you! Come on, it's I'll try to do a conservative. That's why it's not very. I'll just say Nick Kerr. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, what? What's that? That's why this is not a very popular place for brothers. I can't see you, sir. I'm sorry, I'm. But now I'm scared. So they're just in a bar. This is, by the way, like Steel Toe sells tickets to this event, but they're just in a bar. Like people can just walk in. So there just happens to be a black guy in the bar, and he's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you want them to chant what <laughs> now i'm not hearing the thing you're trying to say i'm hearing what it sounds like <laughs> right right yeah i listen i know you're friends with this guy nick but i gotta tell you <laughs> it's dangerously close to another word i'm not in the podcasting business but sir i got something to tell you <laughs> so keep in mind this video is from a year ago now aaron got high and mighty this year and was like guys that was unacceptable. He's starting the chant. This is two years in a row now that we have evidence of, of mm -hmm. him starting an N-word chant. Here he is doing some crowd work. <laughs> okay, good. Let's see how he controls this room. <laughs> Fuck Aaron! <laughs> God, you don't like that. No, I'm just, like, really I'm, I'm just hoping that you can hear the reaction and you'll maybe. Okay. Has anyone ever told you this? I just want to ask you a question. Is it, it's not a test or anything else. When I say these two words, what comes to mind first, right? Self-awareness. Oh, Aaron, I'd like to fill in the blank if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like you to ask yourself that question as well. 
what comes to mind? Steel Toe and the amount of clips we've been able to play about that very topic, self-awareness. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, <okay. laughs> my pro tip my pro, I was going to say my pro tip would have been end there Aaron well <laughs> why does he go hun he does so you know what's weird about this is like last year I know there were steel toe haters out there a year ago nowhere near to the degree there are now <laughs> no. so but this is like last if I did a live show like this where the audience was there to fuck with me, I just wouldn't do another one. No. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess in a way I give him credit, but it's like, he's not learning that no one's there to really enjoy the show. <laughs> Which is strange. Yeah, no, you're the one on stage, though. <laughs> <laughs> It's like he missed the whole thing. <laughs> Did you hear that, guys? I. I. Missed the whole thing. Yeah, that's what he said. Yep, we heard about it. <laughs> How big of him? He's not going to do the N-word chant now. I thought it was going to be only white people. Now I'm uncomfortable. Oops. <laughs> Boy, this guy was trying so hard to be Anthony Cumia. But here's the thing. Oh, yeah. Say, say what you want to be. Say what you want about Cumia. He, he, he's about that life, as the kids say. <laughs> <laughs> you got to you gotta either be that or not. When you get called out for it, you can't go like, oh, no, 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 I didn't mean any of it. Like, you kind of got to be that guy, you know? Right. You have to. But, uh, I was like, for all of Anthony's faults, I can't imagine a black guy being like, hey, you're a fucking racist, and him going, oh, no, no, I'm not, sir, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, but he lost control of this room. Oh, boy. But he was getting laughs for a while. He was. Yeah. You know what it is? He didn't ask for a refund for his ticket. He was here for that Chrissy ass. I don't know what that's a reference to. I don't know either, but I do enjoy that this started off with him being like, I just want you to hear the reaction from the crowd. <laughs> and now the same thing's happening to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh, boy. Black no, I, I paid for. Yeah, I know, and they run so fast. That's the problem. For the women. Why do the women run so fast? Terrifying. You ever seen Black Snake Mo? Yeah. Anyway. Yes. Um, but... Oh, boy. Explain the joke. It makes it better. It's a bad guy and a small white woman. Yeah. Right, right. Which is like as good as sure. white men sure. are nightmares. By the way, anyone that wants to know why I haven't done a live show yet, this is my greatest fear. <laughs> well, I, I imagine it wouldn't be straight stand-up. <laughs> oh, God, no. What are you, nuts? <laughs> we, should. we should. Well, we'll see. It's fun. <laughs> Jesus. It's like you guys are listening and suddenly waiting for me to make the point. But Jesus. He's completely kidding. They're not our nightmare. It's his fantasy. <laughs> Keep explaining it. It makes it a better job. <laughs> I love how this all stems from me asking him self-awareness. Yes, Aaron, that's the problem. You're asking the crowd questions. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> They're there to heckle you. What did you think would happen? And he, he keeps bombing and going, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> well, what's tough is, I, 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 you know what? Let's close out the clip. Because what's funny about this is you forget what he's doing on stage. You need to get out of the chat right now. <laughs> this guy's killing me. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this segment has been brought to you by Blacks.com. Let's bring him up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage by far the most famous person here. Please welcome his first time to extend up comedy, Mr. Nick Potato. Ah, simpler time. <laughs> Nick hadn't fucked his wife yet. <laughs> that 
those were the days. Those were the days. But you know what they said? What I hear because I, you know, I'm a big fan of comedy. Watch a lot of documentaries and things like that. Listen to a lot of podcasts, and I always hear guys say, uh, "When I bring a younger comic out on the road to me, what I ask him is to completely suck the energy out of the room." Yeah. And I think Aaron did a beautiful job of that. There is you nothing know? worse than the comic before you talking to the audience because then for the rest of the time they think contentiously. It's yeah, but then, the, then everyone after this person is going to have to deal with people who I'm like, I'm allowed to talk to them. Right. It's really fucking annoying. But the main part of that was just to show, like, Aaron can't get out of his own way. And the comparison I made last week was, you might get this more, uh, Craig. You a Francesa guy? Sure. Um, well, at least the clips of him online. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, what Francesca's biggest like fault was, but what also made him great, like great to fuck with is like, he didn't realize the internet existed. Right. And like people would call and say, Hey Mike, you had this prediction. And Francesca would say, I never said that. That's right. <laughs> I, I never said anything like that. Mm-hmm. And then uh Funhouse would put together a great compilation of Francesca betting his house on whatever they're <laughs> accusing him of. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, but that was great. It was fun and because Francis is an old man. He didn't get the internet. It was fun. What's weird about Aaron is he exists on the internet. That's where he lives. <laughs> so and yet he says these things like we can't just look them up. He's like, guys, you you all against my wishes were saying racial slurs. Mm-hmm. And he blamed the audience because he's trying to get a job in radio again. And meanwhile, there's tapes of him two years in a row trying to get an N-word chant going in public. In front of black people. It's crazy. It's a psychotic way to behave and think people are just going to be like, oh, shit, you know what? That is our fault. But in his defense, he didn't realize how famous he was, Mike. Oh, fuck you. I forgot. I thought, I thought we were done. <laughs> no. I forgot we had one more clip. We are not. this cocksucker. <laughs> we are not done. No goal. No goal this week. Uh, all right. Um, so, yeah. Aaron, the big news for Aaron this week was that he broke his order of protection, which I guess um, his wife put some kind of restraining order on him in April because Aaron and April were going on and talking about Aaron's ex-wife constantly and shitting on her. And there's some clip of Aaron wishing death on her and April saying she would rub her clit to that. That is fucking insane. (laughs) It's a wild thing to do to the mother of your children. I wish my kids were motherless. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Insane. So um, so that's fun. Like, April says she'd jerk off to it, I guess. And uh, so the mother says, I'd, if you don't mind, <laughs> I'd rather not be spoken about on your podcast. And Aaron said, fine. And she said, well, I don't really believe you. So I'd like the law to get involved. <laughs> and they did. And Aaron kept talking about her over and over and over again. There are YouTube channels that have uh, hour plus videos of Aaron referencing his wife in the time after that agreement. Um, So Aaron had to go to court because he misunderstood that the order of protection was given by a judge. It's now out of the wife's hands. So he was like, well, me and the wife are in good standing now, so I can say whatever I want. And evidently a Minnesota judge said, I don't know about that. (laughs) Um, So Aaron, I guess if Aaron violates his probation, he has to do 90 days in jail or some shit. You can get in trouble for speaking. Uh, If you have a restraint. Yeah. If there's an order of protection on you. Yeah. From I didn't realize it it meant. I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, well, that's specifically what it was about. It's not, this is not a restraining order. People keep saying a restraining order. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am. And I'm I'm talking out of my ass here. I don't know the law. Probably I know it less than you guys do. But my understanding is the order of protection is specifically she sought a lawyer and said, this guy is talking about me on a podcast and I would like to stop that. I didn't know that was le- you could do that. Evidently you can, at least in Minnesota. So, huh. um, yeah. So that's the order that was put on Aaron. A judge said, you got to stop. <laughs> and. Uh, Patrick Melton and a bunch of other people tweeted about this the other day. And this is Aaron spinning that into a win, which is actually kind of impressive in a weird way. You know, what's great. <laughs> what is when people who hate you. Yeah. Like Patrick or somebody uh-huh. 
post a picture that like somebody was waiting outside the courthouse and got a picture of me as I came out of the courthouse. Are you fucking kidding? Dude, I'm famous. I'm the man. <laughs> I'm the fucking greatest thing. These people follow me all over the place. Yes. They love me. Gross. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Melt. These people follow you all over the place. One guy on his day off went to a courthouse and took a picture of you. I was just about to uh, say something and I realized who I was talking about. I was like, he doesn't actually think this, right? And I stopped myself. But here's the, here's the problem with Aaron is like it, you can he's trying to be tongue in cheek, yet he has literally said this about himself. He thinks he's one of the greatest broadcasters ever. He thinks his show is constantly winning and the edgiest show on the internet. So even when he's trying to be kind of cutesy about it, you're like, well, you feel this way. So it's hard for me to have a good laugh at it. If he's trying <laughs> the edgiest show, and he's like, let's get a homo chant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoa crazy and now crazy. i will say if you chance like that probably break out at skank fest i'm not saying whether or not i take part in them but <laughs> there's a there's a charm to what they do that i don't think aaron has you could scream the f word at the top of your lungs and not get in trouble you gotta take advantage of it <laughs> i don't do that i'm not that crazy someone has a camera out <laughs> <laughs> fan that has yeah. nothing better to do with their life than to follow you around Dude. and watch you winning bro i'm the fucking man <laughs> i really not, am i can't help it this guy next to him is not helping him <laughs> but his co-hosts are insufferable here's what's crazy is like we don't get into like this is not an argument based podcast <laughs> so i'm surprised we ever have this feedback but people sometimes say like oh craig or casey day just agree with mike which i'm always surprised to hear that but if you put it side by side with steel toe these guys, this is crossfire. This is well. We did just literally disagree on the Rogan special, so take that chat. Yeah, what a heated Ooh. argument that was. And why are you laughing? We disagree with uh, each other more. It goes to the Amy Schumer uh, episode. <laughs> was, but that's, uh, that's a good one. I think we were. But but, but that's. I mean, that's not in the same stratosphere. Like, yeah. listen. Th I don't know if this is Matt or Johnny. I I, I confuse the two, but. Uh, Listen to this guy tell back up Aaron and tell him how much he's winning. More, I can't even be humble around these people. <laughs> you follow me, you take pictures of me looking fucking dressed to the nines. I look fucking stunning. As evidence, as uh, evidence, dressed to the nines. He wore a suit to court. That's what you're supposed to do. Technically, to the nines. You don't look at someone. You you don't stand in a courthouse and look at someone in a suit and go, "My God, is the king here today?" Matter of fact, you see someone in gym shorts in the court. You're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, life in prison. Yeah. <laughs> the picture online is like, there's Aaron coming out of the courthouse. There were people who I've seen tweet at me that I'm the biggest piece oh, of shit in the world. This is great. world. He actually does look really good. <laughs> now, <laughs> you know, Craig, I'm going to ask, do you I'm believe like, that? Oh, my God. <laughs> do, you, I, do you believe that people have been trolling Aaron for months and... Uh, talking about him going over to Nick Ricada's drug den and having all these orgies and the goal, hitting the goal, and what a pompous ass Aaron is. And every day, this guy on Twitter is obsessed with calling out Steel Toe for the hypocrites that they are. But then he sees that, oh my God, who is that? <laughs> He's actually quite oh, suave. That's not Aaron Imholt. As I live and breathe. Well, today's the day that I have to start being a little unbiased here and say that that is a dapper fellow. He is. He's quite good looking. My God! <laughs> Who let you out of the house looking that good? <laughs> Aaron, hold up! Go back inside! You're going to stop traffic! Too many people. <laughs> You're so handsome! This little town can't take this paparazzi. <laughs> God, is that George Clooney? <laughs> uh, but there's more here. Yeah. Fucking yeah, yeah, good yeah. fucking suit. My second favorite suit, motherfucker. Nice. So uh, which one was it? Second favorite suit, motherfucker. <laughs> I ain't scared of you, motherfuckers. He's code switching or whatever it's called. <laughs> DJ hit me with it. Is this after the N word thing? Oh yeah. That's hilarious that he's talking like that now. He's like. Mm. I would never do that. Mm -mm. She, I'd be looking fine. Oh, she. <laughs> uh, Chris in the chat says, "I think you guys disagree a lot." Reminds me of home. It's nice. <laughs> I, 
I, as a rule, want to be seen publicly disagreeing with Craig just for later. Yeah. <laughs> For when the defense comes, yeah, like yeah. people are like, "Oh, he didn't. He, he, he was polar opposite of this guy. <laughs> yeah, n- no similarities whatsoever. <laughs> the light blue shirt, yeah, with the dark blue jacket, uh huh. The dark oh, good. We get the whole rundown. Brown belt, okay, tied together with some beautiful high mirror shine, brown dress shoes. There you go. Looked great. I've never called my own shoes beautiful. Beautiful. I have some pretty <laughs> nice dress shoes. Do you, do you say? Well, do you ever point down and go beautiful, eh? No, I actually just m- the most I've ever talked about them is I'm like I can't believe how comfortable these are. Put on your shoes and say, "All right, who's sliding out of their chairs, ladies?" <laughs> Craigie's got his shoes on. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> like he he spoke in a different way to convey how beautiful these fucking shoes are. <laughs> They're gorgeous. Great, Scott. <laughs> Is that Aaron Imholt? <laughs> and those shoes. Oh my, they're beautiful. <laughs> well, they're, they're wiping their glasses. <laughs> this must be a mirage. <laughs> and to change. <laughs> what a horse's ass. Oh, he's the, he's like, terrible. I, I, I can't imagine I would ever talk like this, but like I would hope to be goofed on. Like, mm-hmm. does Aaron think he comes off as cool when he talks like that? Like, people are gonna be, God, I didn't realize I was making fun of such a suave and handsome guy. <laughs> yep. Oh man, all these all these months or all these years, I thought I'd been hammering an uggo online. <laughs> I didn't realize how fucking cool he was. <laughs> He's the coolest. <laughs> Channing Tatum himself. <laughs> uh, we got to go to the next uh, Steel Toe Live show. Well, you would fit right in, my friend. No, no, I wouldn't. Oh, oh, you'd love it. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. Like Kevin talking to Oscar about jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you Craig, would. I think you'd love a Steel Toe Live show. <laughs> Just trust me. No, no, no. I can't imagine talking about myself in that way, but Aaron really seems to enjoy it. So good for him, I guess. I, I would throw up at the thought of having a, an ego like that. Well, that's what's like. Aaron pretends to like steer into the skid sometimes, but he's not able to because he thinks he's like, I'm siding with everyone who, despite shitting on me, thinks I looked great at the courthouse. Right. <laughs> Which is like, I'm sure you look fine. You should look your best in court. But how that's like a win for you and your show. Like, if a mug shot came out of me and I didn't look horrendous, and I tweeted out like, "Guys, pretty swell, huh?" Have to sure, a sure. Team. I was sure I was cited in the ISO dose scandal. <laughs> look at my smile. That would have to be a T-shirt for sure. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's absolute. But yeah, is that it for uh, Steel Toe? That is it. Whew, all right. We can uh, take a breather finally. That was fun. It was good to have you back, pal. It's good to be back. You know, spirited, spirited debate. A lot of laughs. <laughs> uh, hope people enjoyed the program. And if you did, make sure you give it a like, comment, uh, subscribe, tap the notification bell. If you're listening to this, the audio version, just leave a five-star review on uh, any podcast platform, wherever you get podcasts. And what's nice about this, Craig produced... So everyone's going to have the audio. That's really cool. Isn't that neat? I like I like when Craig's not here and he thinks, oh, people probably don't want to hear this episode. I'm not he probably doesn't computer. want it released. I'm not around a computer. Not around a computer. <laughs> when I'm not here, I'm usually hey, like, I work like- on that. You're going to want to rehearse that line. <laughs> 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 because they're coming for you, my friend. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we have a lot of fun here today, gang. But the most, you know, gang, we've got a lot of laughs here on the Blind Mike Project. But I think it's important to remind everyone that pedophilia is not a joke. <laughs> and I in no way condone the actions of ISO Doe or any other podcast producer. Yeah, the guy from Are You Garbage, right? No. <laughs> no. No, no. Is that what happened? All right. 
how dare you? Why would you say that? <laughs> Toby uh, McMullen seems like a nice man. That was a, a deflection. Like I'll do anything to exonerate himself. This <laughs> monster. <laughs> All right, blindmike.net. Uh, so rubbed out will be coming back. Yep. Uh, okay. I think next Wednesday it'll be out. Uh, okay, it's so on keep an eye out for that. Patreon at out. the moment. A true crime show. If you haven't checked it out yet, do that. Do it. And uh, hackridethedemon.com. Uh, guys, let us know in the comments. Are you a Craigophile or are you a Daniac? Or called them, right? Yeah, Daniacs. Or yeah. both. Hmm? Or a uh, what's an Electra? Electra electricians. <laughs> you an electrician. I don't know. I got nothing else. We'll do a workshop that one. <laughs> We'll get back to you next week on that one, folks. Let's brainstorm. Until then, bye-bye. And we have a mean transition. Hey, it's Boogie. Sappers through the way, everyone all the way. Now, this is very interesting. To, now, really, ladies, if you listen in, and men, and everybody in between. If I tell you you've got a homicide, buddy, you've got a homicide. I hope to hear from you soon. I am proud to own the Trumpy Bear, and I will always be proud to be an American. Until then, have yourself a great day, and as always, rock on. <laughs> Stop the baloney, huh? What kind of statement is that? Oh, I wrote it. One of my favorite players to cover when he was here was Mike Vrabel. Tell me Mike Vrabel's story. Whatever, dude. I keep it cool at the gym. <laughs> Piss on him. Fuck you, Mike. Fuck you, Mike. Fuck you, Mike. All right. Stop my belly hurts. My dad was in the military. Who is that, sir? Can you please kindly F off, please? If a person is on a bridge threatening to jump, how do we know that he wants help? Anyway, God bless America. <laughs>